So uh, <laughs> the verdict came down. Rust Armor, Hannah Gutierrez, was found guilty on Wednesday of involuntary manslaughter in the fatal onset shooting of cinematographer wow. Helena, uh, Helena Hutchinson. <laughs> Hutchins. Uh, the jury deliberated for under three hours before reaching the verdict. Jurors found her not guilty of tampering with evidence in the case. Uh, prosecutors told jurors that Gutierrez repeatedly failed to maintain proper firearm safety and that her negligence led to the death of Hutchins, who was shot, of course, by Alec Baldwin. While the defense countered that the 26-year-old is a convenient scapegoat <clears throat> during closing arguments in the trial. Uh, the judge ordered that Gutierrez be remanded into custody following the verdict. She faces up to 18 months in prison with, conviction, with the conviction. A sentencing date has not been set yet. Uh, the defense attorney, Jason Bull, said they plan to appeal. Hutchins' family released a statement Wednesday evening through their lawyer, Gloria Allred, and said that they wanted everyone responsible for her death to be held responsible. They said today was the first trial and conviction in the criminal justice process. We are satisfied that the jury, based on the evidence, found Hannah Gutierrez-Reed guilty beyond a reasonable doubt for her part in the taking of Helena's life. So if you're Alec Baldwin's lawyers and you're looking at this and you see that they got a conviction on this, you got to be wondering, uh-oh, what's going to happen with him? Um, maybe, or maybe they'll see that as enough. All done, that's her, it was her thing, and maybe. He, had, he had no yeah. culpability. Um, they said, uh, we look forward to the justice system uh, continuing to make sure that everyone else who is responsible for Helena's death is required to face the legal consequences for their actions. During the two-week trial, uh, prosecutors presented evidence they said showed uh, Gutierrez was responsible for bringing six live rounds onto the set and did not discover them for 12 days before the deadly shooting by failing to perform industry standard safety practices. Uh, Baldwin was practicing a cross draw in a church on the set of the film uh, when the Colt 45 revolver fired a live round, striking her and uh, Joel Salza, who suffered a non-life-threatening injury. Uh, the prosecutor, Carrie Morrissey, told jurors during the closing argument, this is not a case where Hannah Gutierrez made one mistake, and that one mistake was accidental, putting a live round into that gun. This case is about constant, never-ending safety failures that resulted in the death of a human being and nearly killed another. I mean, could you imagine, you know, when we were watching the... Um the Alec Baldwin interview. I I didn't know that he didn't pull the trigger. That he, he was says he didn't pull the trigger. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, but I I mean, I have to take his word for it that he was just cocking the hammer back. And but like, what I'm saying is is that surprise. You know what I mean? When something goes off, you're like, wait, what? <sighs> well, yeah, oh, yeah dude. Well, one the, time I was I was hunting with my dad, yeah. and I had my shotgun, and I was holding it up on my shoulder, pointing straight up. And as when you're bird hunting, you're just walking around, you're waiting until mm -hmm. it's time. So you're just kind of doing whatever you can do to kill time. And I would click the safety on and off. Yeah. Just kind of playing around. And I, I knew gun safety yeah. very well. And I'm just clicking it on and off. And every now and then I would I would click it on and then I would pull the trigger just to make sure that the safety was engaged. Right. But one time <laughs> it wasn't and I had it on my shoulder. Went, Bam! And it went off. And <gasps> it, oh, my God. It, it shot straight up in the air. Uh, scared the living daylights out of my my dad turned around with daggers in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. Like yeah. I missed. Uh, damn, I was aiming. No, for he her. was. He knew exactly what was up, and he uh -huh. was just like, "You ever do that again? You know, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't I'm need kick to your say ass anything. Up through your shoulder. Yeah, between your shoulders. So I know what it feels like yeah. to accidentally fire a round off, and it's very wow. scary. So now the fact that there was even live ammo on the set. To begin with, so weird. Well, I think, major breach of protocol. I haven't been there, obviously, for the evidence being presented, but I think yeah. that's the root of your problem yep. right there. That's that that is all that is what there is to it, and that's why I don't think really Alec Baldwin is the guy to blame for this. But you know, we'll I'm not on the jury. Adam Sandler and Margot Robbie topped the Forbes list of highest paid actors for 2023. Sandler earned 73 million dollars. Largely from his partnership with Netflix, while Robbie earned $59 million, mainly, mainly for her role in uh, Barbie. Uh, <laughs> that guy made $73 million last year. I have to think about it, too. His, the movies aren't, aren't blockbusters, but uh, they, they do very well. Uh -huh. And he yeah. does a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, yeah. Do, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the list include Tom Cruise at 45 mil, Ryan Gosling at 43, Matt Damon at 43, Jennifer Aniston at 42, Leonardo DiCaprio at 41, Jason <laughs> Statham at 41, Ben Affleck at 38, and Denzel Washington at 24. So those were the big money makers last year uh, for acting, that is. Some decent loot.
Uh, the annual list is made up almost exclusively of movie stars, primarily men, who combined to earn $449 million last year. This might be a weird question, but is there a way to track people who subscribe to Netflix? Because obviously that's where they make most of their revenue uh, because of Adam Sandler movies. Like, can, you know, can Netflix quantify his worth to them because of people watching directly Adam Sandler yeah, movies. I, I'm sure there's some sort of metric that relates to that. Where they, they spend can, a lot of money yeah. on him and also on Jennifer Aniston. Oh, they're they in, love them. They're in a bunch of movies together. Yeah. And she was on the list too. Hey, speaking of Barbie, uh, they announced a move to honor eight women who have made an impact worldwide. The iconic children's toy will celebrate its 65th anniversary on March 9th and that's one day after International Women's Day celebrated all over the globe. And this year... Barbie announced it will honor eight women who are shaping the future through their inspiring stories, uh, according to the brand. Uh, the lineup has one-of-a-kind role model dolls, including Viola Davis, representing the United States, Shania Twain, representing Canada, Helen Mirren, representing the United Kingdom. Interesting. Kylie Minogue will be uh, representing Australia. Are we uh, finally getting a Snooki? Uh, Myra Gomez of Brazil, Lila Aviles of Mexico, Nicole Fujita of Japan, and Inissa Amani of Germany. Uh, the Barbie brand described the Viola Davis doll as, or described her as a social justice activist, having worked to eradicate childhood hunger in the United States and founding her own production company with a focus on giving a voice to the voiceless through the strong impact for impactful narratives. Uh, Shania Twain was described as one of music and fashion's most renowned trailblazers, breaking down barriers for women in country music. And uh, Helen Mirren, uh, of course, was uh, named for her global role. Uh, and said they said that uh, Mirren is not only a well-known actress, but an advocate for embracing and celebrating self-expression, aging, and fashion. Mm. And Helen said in a statement, to be chosen by Barbie as a role model is a huge compliment. And something I would never have imagined in my wildest dreams happening to me at this stage in my life. And these, by the way, uh, will not be available for purchase. I thought so. Yeah, they are made specifically. They've given them to them. Almost like uh, the awards, okay. so yeah. to speak. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. If you were to have that, you know, done for you, yeah. how awesome would that be? I would love you to listen. I, you know, a, a G.I. Joe. Well, actually, my, I do have a G.I. Joe in the office that is sort of looks like me. Yeah. Remember the ones they did for us? Yeah, I do remember. Yeah. I have mine at home somewhere. Not Hasbro didn't do it. Some, you know, a listener did it and customized them. Yep. Uh, Jonathan Van Ness is being accused of being abusive and having rage issues that caused a rift between the Queer Eye Fab Five. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Rolling Stone spoke to seven production sources who told the outlet that in a report on Tuesday that the hairstylist was allegedly difficult to work with. His reps have not responded to the comments, though. Uh, the magazine's source described them as a nightmare, a monster, and demeaning. And accused them of slashing out, uh, and lashing out at uh, crew members and those who worked closest to them. Uh, one source told the outlet that Van Ness would, quote, explode at least once a week. Hmm. Six individuals that the outlet spoke with accused Van Ness of having a public persona that is largely a charade. A charade. A charade. Yes. So um, uh, it, then that uh, I've always perceived him as being a sort of a kind of a flower power of right. people, positive guy. Uh, two sources share that uh, Van Ness stood out in terms of unprofessionalism with their various <clears throat> moods dictating how the day would go. Uh, Van Ness's alleged behavior reportedly led to multiple members of the group being reluctant to shoot them. Uh, the outlet reports that Netflix had at least one meeting with Van Ness, but sources said that it uh, resulted in little change. Huh. So we'll see if That's that surprising. affects their uh, future. Yeah, nothing yeah. but good things to say about him on the set of Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while back. That was a while back, yeah. They've changed. <laughs> uh, I want my hair to look good. But, and you can understand that. Uh, Gal Gadot. I want an ombre. Just expanded her adorable family of five on Wednesday. The Wonder Woman star made a surprise post on social media announcing the birth of her fourth daughter, Ori. The third, now, I'd heard nothing about her being pregnant. Nothing. Yep. yep. Nothing! Uh, nothing is pregnant! Yes. <laughs> uh, she's, I got you. you thank you. I wanted okay. the nothing is over clip. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Nothing is over! Nothing is pregnant! Yeah. Uh, my sweet girl, welcome, she wrote in, daughters. in the Instagram message. Uh, the pregnancy was not easy, and we made it through. You have brought so much light into our lives, living up to your name, Ori, which means my light in Hebrew. Ah. She said, our hearts are full of gratitude. Welcome to the house of girls, and daddy is pretty cool, too. 
Uh, she tied the knot with Israeli film producer John Verzano in 2008. Uh, they welcome their daughters, <laughs> Alma in 2011. My daughters? Maya in 2017 and Daniela in 2021. That's a, that's a brood there. That is a brood. Yeah. And she joked that uh, she loves being a mom so much that she would give birth once a week if she could, adding that it's so magical. I know hubby has no problem jumping in and doing I, his part. Yeah, I'll help. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Tag team, I'll jump in there. <laughs> uh, Joshua Jackson and Lupita Nyong'o were spotted passionately kissing. Oh, I saw pictures. While celebrating her 41st birthday <laughs> in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. It was passionate. There was yeah. a lot of passion. She's on the beach. <laughs> yeah, a lot and of this, that. This comes uh, several months after they first confirmed the romance. Were they doing the thing where their their lips weren't even touching, just their tongues? <laughs> 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 Absolutely, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the porn kiss. It's pretty uh, wild. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, but apparently it's it's full full on uh, full steam ahead uh, with those two. Yeah, we're looking at pictures of them. Yeah, she's I like them both. Cradling his head. And, yeah, uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, do we have a clip of uh, Giselle Bunchen crying in her post divorce interview? Marissa, mm. I can tell on the look of your face. Not yet. In the, the meantime, meantime, let, in the meantime, let's just listen to Sylvester. <laughs> To Sylvester. That's, isn't that who sings this? Oh, I thought you were talking about Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hit? <laughs> I, I'm like, come on, everybody. Do you want to hit? Do Nothing's over for you. You're better than that. I just bought a cat. Nothing is over. Buck his cup and Link. <laughs> Uh, this okay, is the music from the it. dance <laughs> sequence of the house party that Eddie Murphy has in Trading Places. Yeah. And we got it too late the other day. We had finished the segment, so we didn't get to follow up because Casey had asked a question what that song was. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I and wasn't the band, sure was... I guess, is Sylvester yeah, or I the thought singer. Maybe it was Donna Summer, but uh, ah. it's not. <laughs> so we do have the Giselle clip. All right, here we that Okay. Now. This is, uh, she, they, they were talking about her and they bring up the divorce. They bring up the divorce and then catch. Her. Yeah, she had to stop for a second. Everything I've experienced, it made me realize what I want and what I don't want. You didn't think that the marriage would end. No one goes into no. a marriage thinking yeah. it's going to end, but it does. You said it was the death of a dream. Yeah. How are you? Well, when you say... <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't know... Can I have a little moment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they had to stop, <laughs> stop filming for a yeah. second. Though, yeah, well, you know, well, I think she has the world by the balls because she's uh, gorgeous and filthy rich. Yeah, but uh, she has her moments. Yeah, she's still a person. Still, still a person. person and, and does she, she not bleed? Actually, in love with the dude. So yeah. tell me, do you bleed? <laughs> Batman just comes in from. It's time for another Batman interview. <laughs> from off the. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't want your marriage to end, but now that it does, do you bleed? So he says, close. And said, Barbara Walters, was, what kind of tree would you be? Uh huh. Do you bleed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 last time I checked, I mean, I had a, a paper cut last well, week. If not, you will. It bled. So, oh my God. <laughs> um, Wait, so, you know what? What? I'm just trying to like connect. Batman to yeah. Giselle. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, Affleck was in <laughs> those commercials, those Duncan commercials with Tom Brady. Ah, yeah, there you go. So, Boom. Uh -huh. that's, you a, know, that's a clear connection. Well this done. obviously happened. Tell that's, me, what kind of donut do you like? <laughs> that's only one degree of separation. Yeah, yeah very Munch, close. Munch Except Kings and the whole nine. Yeah, the uh, the donut skewer and all that. The, <laughs> well, is it the Munchkin It's a Munchkin skewer. Munch yeah. Kings, Preston. Munch Kings. Yes. Skewers. Dunk Kings. <laughs> Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik are going to reprise their roles on The Big Bang Theories uh, as The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon Cooper and Amy Farah Fowler in the May 16th series finale of the series Young Sheldon. Uh, additional details about the on-screen couple's appearance are being kept under wraps ahead of the series finale. Uh, Parsons, who executive produces and provides voiceover for Young Sheldon, and Bialik last appeared on screen together in the May 2019 series finale of The Big Bang Theory, during which Sheldon and Amy won the Nobel Prize in Physics. Uh, those Thus far, uh, Young Sheldon has featured a number of references to Big Bang with flagship favorites uh, Kayla Cuoco and Simon Helberg, and also uh, uh, Mind Bialik uh, previously appearing via voiceovers. Uh, news of their on-screen reunion 
comes a day after CBS officially confirmed that the franchise would continue with a young Sheldon spinoff following oh, Jesus. Emily Osment and Montana Jordan's characters, Mandy and Georgie. Huh. So they are... They have, they have, it's a cash cow. They're, They're milking, milking this. It. Yeah. It's funny, though, because they took Big Bang Theory, and this young Sheldon is a decidedly different tone. Right. So, um, you know, it's not in front of a live audience. It's a one-camera um, sitcom. And um, I'll be curious to see what they do with this one. I'm really glad that she's not uh, continuing to host Jeopardy because I like her. Yeah. I really didn't like her as a Jeopardy host. <laughs> and so she, this is probably she's not as good as Ken. No, yeah. she's not. Yeah. And, uh, is she, But she seems like she's a pretty good host. She's just not a good Jeopardy she's, host. She's, by the way, she's brilliant. Yeah, and I yeah. that's what I, I think that she's a really likable person. And this is probably stupid and selfish of me, but yeah. like the fact that she's not hosting Jeopardy every night allows me to continue to like her yeah. uh, away from that game show. I don't like Ken that much as the host. I I disagree. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah. I like him more and more. The more I watch yeah. him, the more I, I, I want him as a enough. host. And I think that he has really uh, taken Alex Trebek's lead. And, and I agree he 100%. respectfully added a little bit of himself. But for the most part, the, the, the tenor is exactly the same as, as Trebek. He's not effing with the system. Yep. He does. It's an honor to Alex all the time. His... his um, the flow. That's what it's about. It's yeah. about keeping the flow. And he's really good at it. Uh, the Young Sheldon series finale airs Thursday, May 16th. That's on C. Tell me, will you watch it? CBS, I will. You will. Yeah. Uh, Tim Allen is returning to ABC. Uh, the former Last Man Standing star will top line Shifting Gears, a multi-camera comedy pilot for the Disney-backed broadcast network. Uh, Shifting Gears revolves around uh, Matt, who's played by him, Tim Allen, a stubborn, widowed owner of a classic car restoration shop. So he's not yeah, not too far, too far yeah, yeah, yeah. from uh, from home improvement. Uh, when Matt's estranged daughter and her teenage kids move into his house, uh, the real restoration begins. Uh, the shifting gears order comes as ABC is pivoted. Uh, to a year-round development model. So it's ABC's first pilot order of 2024 and arrives as the network already has uh, drama high potential in line for the 2024-25 broadcast season after the series was developed more than a year ago. Uh, this is the fourth broadcast pilot order of 2024 as only NBC is producing pilots this season. You know what? I don't watch any, I, I don't watch any sitcoms. I don't, watch, yeah, I don't, I don't really watch virtually any network television or at least when it's airing on those networks, I might jump in and stream episodes later on. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, it's it's like the John Cryer sitcom. This yeah. one that just came out. Uh, I watched the first episode and it's it was good. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, maybe at some point I'll watch the rest. But I just don't. My viewing habits have dramatically shifted. Mm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Exactly. I think a lot of people have absolutely. Lionsgate is expanding the Twilight franchise Yay! with, oh, with a new movie. animated series. Uh. Uh, Michael Burns, Vice Chairman of Lionsgate, uh, shared the news. Uh, back in April of last year, Variety reported that a Twilight TV series adaptation was in early development. Uh, the animated series will be based on the Stephanie Myers book series of the same name. Uh, there were originally four Twilight novels, and then in 2015, she released the book Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined. That was a gender swapped the two main characters, Bella and Edward. Myers then released Midnight Sun in 2020, which told the story of the first book from Edward's perspective rather than Bella's. Uh, so not only that, Lionsgate is also expanding the John Wick franchise with a new series. Uh, and Burns said, I think that we'll take one of our great action franchises starring Keanu Reeves, and I think it'll be a television series. So they're working on that. Good I, luck with that. I doubt he'll be. No, I don't think so. Keanu. They have the, the Continental series, which I watched a little bit of, and it didn't didn't catch me. Mm. And then one last thing, Netflix is doubling down on Avatar, The Last Airbender. Uh, the streamer has renewed the lavish live-action adaptation of the Nickelodeon series for two more seasons. Uh, the order concluded the story of Aang's uh, journey to become the Avatar in a fantastical world. And since the show's February 22nd debut, the series has been Netflix's top English-language TV show with 41.1 million views. Uh, and while the first season was eight episodes, no word yet on the episode count for the final two seasons. Uh, Netflix has done double season renewals before on shows like Emily in Paris and Stranger Things, but this might be the first time that the streamers ordered two seasons to close out a series. Uh, the Avatar animated series likewise uh, told its story across three seasons. So the, the viewers are mixed on it. I started watching it. I, I'm, I'm, I like it. I think they spent a lot on it. It looks really good. Yeah, Press, did you finish it? Because uh, I know you were watching it. And you, and you no, played. I didn't start it yet. Oh, actually. I thought you did. Percy but, Jackson oh. is what he's watching. Percy Jackson oh. I did, but my... Uh, 
my son, who is a big, big, big fan of the animated series, is... Lukewarm. A little lukewarm on it. There exactly. you go. So that, yeah. I think that's the reaction. Most people who are big fans of the uh, the, uh, the animated anime series yeah. uh, are, are not too cool on it. I wasn't that caught up in the original, so I'm kind of liking it more, I think. The main bad guy, he's... I'm just not intimidated by him. You know what I mean? Like, You're not a scared. Superb? No, no. Yeah. And I was like, why would you cast this guy... Uh, you, do you know what I mean? Like, just his delivery, I'm like... Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I yeah. mean, he, he, well, he works for me. It was kind of one of the complaints that uh, I got from Carter was that they, they didn't quite stick true to the characters okay. uh, from the original anime series. So, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. Ah, hell. Ah, hell. But, hey, it's getting two more seasons. So yeah. That's, that's a go. Suck it. Yeah, suck it, if you will. <laughs> um, let's do the clips. <laughs> Pokemon Horizons, the series, is introducing a new audience to the classic anime through young trainers, Liko and Roy. And in this clip, voice actor uh, Anjali Kanapuneni talks about moving from supporting character to series lead. I played this character, Danica, and at that point, I was already, like, over the moon. So when I got the chance to audition for Roy, who's, of course, one of our new leads now that Ash has left us, it was crazy. I really, I didn't expect in a million years to be such a large part of a franchise that I grew up loving and that so many people love. Get up! Uh, Pokemon Horizons, the series premieres on Netflix today. <laughs> I was thinking one time, Casey, you made a video with Nick Murphy. Yeah. And you're like, is that a Pokemon? Pokemon? <laughs> oh, is it a Squirtle? It's a Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. All right, next clip. An imaginary. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and very unhappy Ooh. that she abandoned him so many years ago. In this clip, 10-year-old Piper Braun talks about being on a scary movie set. It is crazy. <laughs> There's so much happening. You're, like, in the moment. So, like, you're pulling. You, There's winds blowing. The entity, it's so much but it's so crazy and it's so fun it's like chaos but it's like it's fun chaos <laughs> Shut the f up. oh my god she's adorable she so is adorable cute. yeah, yeah. Uh, imaginaries in theaters friday and if you're watching on youtube right now you'll see right above my shoulder uh a bear in the background with a sign that explains to you how you could possibly win some tickets to a screening of that movie uh -huh. all right uh so Go watch, if you will, and check it out. Uh, like I said, it's in theaters on Friday, but we do have a screening coming up. And it's from the people uh, who created Five Nights at Freddy's and Megan. You remember yes. what a hit that was. Absolutely huge. Um, so it was Five Nights at Freddy's, both of them. Yep, so Lionsgate Imaginary is in theaters uh, this Friday, March 18th. And we have a screening, and all you have to do is look on our YouTube page right now and see what's behind me. And you mm. might get tickets to that. We're going to take a break. We have a lot going on today. Uh, our friend John Belaris is coming by this morning. All the information about that Russian mob thing that he got hooked up in by accident. Uh, it, was, it was big. It's a the, big story. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the the documents have been released, so we can talk to John about that. And uh, we are also going to talk to the owner of Coco's Crush Bar, of which we are going to be broadcasting live from a week from tomorrow in Clearwater, Florida. So we will uh, find out what we can expect at the bar and all that stuff with him in a little while. And we got some other things to do. We'll take a break. Stay with us. Listen, yeah, I think I'm 93.3 WMMR. All right. Thank you, Kathy. By the way, we're having some issues with our contest page. Son of a bitch. WMMR.com. So Marissa's working on it. She's going to try and get that uh, taken care of. She'll so, fix it. Uh, watch what's behind me here because we have a chance for you to win uh, movie passes and uh, we'll see if we can get that thing fixed. But in the meantime, let's dive into the world of Presbo. It's uh, <laughs> time for Totally Presbo. Yep. Totally Presbo. All right, uh, I have a few stories that kind of piqued my interest. Uh, and that's what this is about. This right. is about anything that catches your eye. Yeah. It is, in fact, totally Presbo. I, I forgot what the thread for this one was. Sometimes yeah. I forget. Yeah, okay. So this, this is about cooking, right? No, and this food? is not about oh, cooking. Okay. This is so Totally stupid. Presbo. This is so dumb. All right. Okay. Uh, there's a new relaxation trend taking over TikTok. Okay. Ooh, I love relaxation. <laughs> yeah, right? Isn't it great, though? And um, it's called the Herkle Durkle. The Herkle Durkle. I yeah. hate the name, I, yeah. but I'm still with you. Tell me. All uh, right. Can you spell Herkle for me real quick? Because I just want to see if I can, in my mind. Guess what it is. H-U-R-K-L-E. Yeah. 
Okay, so I guess you do herkies oh. until you're really, really tired. comfortable. Yeah. Nope, it has nothing to do with that. It's an old Scottish term, so who the hell knows? Oh, yeah. Herkle yeah. okay. Durkle. Herkle Durkle. It's something you know, it's called the Herkle Durkle. Um, and so it means, and, and like I said, this is stupid. Okay. To lie in bed when one should Uh-oh. be up and about. Yes. Somebody sent this to me. Ear okay. Herkle Durkle. And, and, and <laughs> yes, it's an, uh, a Scottish tradition that's been around for like 200 years, and everybody's like, what a great tradition to maintain now. And, and yeah, it's just like being comfortable and being relaxed. It's just laying in yeah. bed. That's exactly it's, right. And they, that they is not a trend. Yeah. We've um, been doing this since we were born. Exactly. <laughs> but, but. Angus, exactly. hey, yes, I got something. You got to do the hurricane dark. But I will say that sometimes, <laughs> like, I will, like, be relaxing in my on my couch and it's not the same. And I will take said relaxation. I'm like, this needs to be done in bed with a proper blanket and yeah, but it's surrounded not a trend. by pillows. I, no, I know that. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this, this is, is different. Is after you've spent the night sleeping oh. and you wake up and you just lay, stay in bed. You just lay in bed. Now, I've only done that Hungover. once <laughs> in the past 25 years. Really? And that was... uh Were yeah, you no. sick? No, no. I was just... I told you guys, and, and I haven't talked about this yet on the air. It was a couple of weeks ago. I had oh, yeah. what I contend to be the greatest night's sleep possibly in my entire life. You were telling us about this, and you had assistance? I I, I was by myself. I, I uh, you know, I went to our shore house to go check on some stuff down there. I spent the night. I, I slept for 10 hours uninterrupted. Uh, didn't get up to go to the bathroom. I woke up. I didn't feel crazy drowsy or anything. And I just laid in bed for a little while. And and I eased into my day. And it was, I, I felt so good. Oh. I couldn't tell you the last time that's happened to me. At the point you woke up, yes. how much longer did you remain in bed? Uh, <laughs> for, what 20 minutes. Oh, well, that's nothing. Yeah. I don't no, think I that's... I did, I did, you were languishing in bed. I didn't laze around, but no, normally... That's when, not how you do the hurt or dirt. Nah, no, normally when I wake up, I, I get up and I get going. I mean, for work, I get up and immediately, yeah, I'm like yeah, you, yeah. Steve, I jump right out of yeah, bed. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but on, even on the weekend, I don't linger laying in bed. Yeah, I'm like, I, don't ah, I get up and go get some coffee and let's get if, the day started. Same, you know? same. If I yeah. do, I'm a dead man. I yeah. got to get up and go. Yeah. yeah, because that whole notion of... And I envy people that can do that. Um, so the, the notion here is once you've completed a full night's sleep, yeah. you then sort of just stay you in just bed. just stay in yeah, bed. I can do that, no problem. Okay. Yeah, oh, good. I, yeah, and it's uh, relaxing and uh, a nice way to, for me. You've been herkling and dirkling for yeah. quite a while, then. Yeah, I kind of started the herkle dirkle. Do you prefer herkle dirkling with the TV on or the TV off? I don't have a TV in my bedroom. <gasps> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no Wait, way. why can't you? Uh, because I don't need more screens. <laughs> In, yeah. in, a, in the bedroom. I like, want, do you, you, you look you at your phone a lot I want sep- No, I want separation yeah, from yeah. Uh, television, at least one screen. So, yes, no no uh, TV. Yeah, I am <laughs> separated by television. It's about a half a foot from the bottom of my feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I get that, Nick, but I was just wondering if it was like because you you would turn it. If it was in there, you'd turn it on and watch it. That's right. Yeah, I okay. I, I don't watch TV in my bedroom. I have a TV. In fact, last night I decided I'm going to watch a little bit of TV, and I went to turn it on, and the batteries in my remote were, we're dead. dead. <laughs> That's how long it's been since I've actually watched TV in well, my life. I've got have a TV. I do, room. yes. I got the, the Dolby Atmos set up in the bedroom. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm a know. lunatic and I admit it. I actually love watching TV in bed. I so Come on over. So so growing up, um, we were not allowed to have TVs in our bedroom. Um, and so when I was able to get a TV in my bedroom, it was like, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I can I can watch TV. I can here. herkle darkle. But I yeah. prefer to watch TV in my bed than downstairs on the couch. Um, this is going back to Herkle Durkle, uh, so some people, uh, including actress uh, Kira Kozarin, most known for her role in the Nickelodeon series The Thundermans, uh, is a Herkle Durkler. She said, just thought you guys should know that the Scottish have a word for laying in bed here after it's time to get up, and it's called the Herkle Durkle, and she wrote, I do be herkling, and I do be durkling. <laughs> I kind of like that. And yeah. once I've herkled my last durkle... In a given morning, I will get up. But I'm a big fan of a Herkle Durkle, she so said. So is there a minimum time? For example, if you're merely in bed for 10 minutes, have you completely Herkled and Durkled? Or I do, you, do you have to? I is probably and, subjective. And, and yeah, probably subjective. Yeah. And the end but, result is you feel more 
at peace, you're more relaxed, or what does it provide the doesn't purple say, jungle? Doesn't say, but apparently there is a similar trend that happened earlier this year that's called bed rotting. <laughs> bed oh, rotting yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds more committed. It says the practice of spending many hours in bed during the day, often with snacks or an electronic device as a voluntary retreat from activity or stress. Bed rotting. So um, when you... But that's that's not just... That's at any time. This is, this is, Herkle Durkle is right after, right you, after wake you wake up. And you just stay there. Yeah, that's not for me. No. And I'm a Scotch yeah. Irish. Yeah. And you are as well. Yeah, I am too, but I'm, I'm not going to Herkle my Durkle. No. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow, um, nice. So I thought you guys might find that interesting. All right, let's do another one. Totally Presbo. The Brazilian butt lift. Um, so the quest for the perfectly plump bottom and shapely thighs. Uh, while they are on this quest, women may overlook its effects on personal cleanliness. A recent TikTok video inspired a site-wide dialogue among men about the, the quote, BBL smell. Oh, you familiar no. with this? I, and you no, can I'm not familiar You can imagine with it. what the story is, right? Oh, uh, it, it meets them during the intimate moments. Uh, this guy's oh. post said where uh, the smell was like, quote, an assault on my nose. Uh, it's garnered more than 3.5 million views, and uh, both men and women confirm the odor and explain the reasons behind it. There was a general consensus on where to place the blame. Women, including those who have undergone BBLs, Brazilian butt lifts, uh, said that a larger backside is simply harder to keep clean after using the restroom. They so can't there's, wipe they can't, their they can't wipe their asses. Come on, Kath. Have you? Yeah. So if you've what seen. The hell? I, the yeah, really, take a shower. The really big one. The really big butt lifts, you know? Yeah. The, the, but listen, like, obnoxious. And it yeah. has gotten bad lately. Has like it? like I am seeing it everywhere. And at first Like I, gigantic ass. Gigantic. And at first I didn't believe that they were actually going and getting surgery done. But yeah. I've noticed now because I can pick out breast implants like yeah. uh, like very easily. Yeah. And now I feel like I'm I'm able to do this because it's so perfectly round it's perfectly shaped and gargantuan they're, and and oftentimes not all the time but oftentimes their waists are tiny you know and then they have it, it's it's not natural you know yeah. to for yeah. the way that it looks same like breast implants there's you know? an instagram sometimes model they don't look natural who yep. has had both done and so she sticks out about five feet in front and five feet in back yep. it looks ridiculous i see, just I, I just saw one the other day right and she was this little thing and she was so cute now i don't know what her butt looked like before but when she turned to the side i was like Oh my God! She was like a walking shelf. through the wall. Oh, really? A shelf, but it was like perfectly round, perfectly plump. I mean, I, and how do you wipe? Uh, some gotta, are so huge. How do you wipe them? I gotta believe it's a, a little bit of that dysmorphia theme. Same thing yes. with the, the the butt, the boobs, and the lips. Uh, you can easily fall into. You don't see it. It looks absolutely. Good to you. Well, so, and I think this too, though they're taking your own fat. So I bet you that's why people like it is because uh, they're removing well, fat from one place and, and just putting it back there. You know that some people have died because they've been, they, it wasn't, it's not always fat. Uh, sometimes it's been things like cement. Silicon. And, and, and silicon and other fillers. So this guy uh, had his first person account uh, going on a date uh, with a woman with a Brazilian butt lift who later in the evening, he said, when undressed, admitted a smell that suggested she had not wiped properly or washed oh, in that area well enough. Oh, my God. This is is, is not right the now. huge ass worth that uh, to have well, a with, uh, rotting stank ass? There are plenty of people with big asses that can wipe themselves. Why can't you wipe? Terrible. All right, so, so Kathy, I don't understand. You had an enormous. Uh, I the, do have an I enormous. I mean, like it, it, but like this level. <laughs> I can wipe no. just fine. How do you, so? How do you do it at home then? <laughs> Give okay. us. Can you demonstrate also, how listen, you wipe? If you cannot get yourself clean, I don't care if you have a then big ass, a small it. ass. If you're a man or a woman, get in the freaking shower. Yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely oh, right. Man, get a bidet. So, well, that's what they recommend, actually. Oh. So, uh, the pretty realist uh, said, when God created us, he gave us arms. All of our arms are made specifically for our body. You probably have a hard time wiping your ass properly because your <laughs> body is a little bit wider than your arms are allowing you to reach in that area. <laughs> Dr. Roger Sai, a board-certified plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, confirmed the theory in a video disclosing two secrets that Instagram models don't want you to know about their BBL. He said, wiping down there is going to be a lot more difficult because there's more to reach around. So, if you're around somebody with a BBL and they smell probably because of that. Is that something you can bring up to them, you think? Plastic surgeons typically give their patients fair warning about difficulties in the bathroom. Uh, sitting is not allowed for about two months after undergoing a BBL. What? Wow. You can't sit? 
Uh, mm-hmm. Though sitting on a toilet for a relatively quick bathroom break is okay. So I guess for a certain amount of time you can't sit. But what? Long. So I don't. You just can't. You're probably sit. sitting on. You laying on your side, or they probably don't mean sitting directly. You know, up oh, normally. Wow. You're, you're, there's almost like you know, like a, or maybe you're using like a donut. Uh, many physicians, by the way, recommend bidets to wash the area thoroughly. Otherwise, it may take some uh, painful yoga maneuvers <laughs> to, oh, to wipe your ass. Dude, yeah. right. there's nothing on earth that is worth having your ass no, rot. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, that's gnarly. Yeah. No. So apparently that's a thing. Does I've it never do really for cons- you guys? So like, uh, no, no, me neither. No, I'm not no, a big no. butt guy. No, um, me neither. I'm a small butt guy, actually. Yeah. I like more tiny petite booties. Like a boy's ass. Kind of oh like that. What? You yeah. don't like you don't like that little like bubble butt though. The, I do the, a little bit. I do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a nice, okay. a nice, uh, or even a, a full is is fine. Uh, but uh, but these are absurdly large. They're they're, they're, they're no, ridiculous. I, trust me, I I know. But it's the same and, thing. And they're they're like, also unnaturally high. So and, and normally an ass that fat that a lot of these people pursue would would sag. But these yeah. are bolstered in an artificial yeah. way that makes yeah. no sense. Hang on, Julie's got a comment. Let me go to her. Hi, uh, Julie, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Gadzooks. Gadzooks. Okay, what's your, uh, yeah. what do you want to contribute here? So let's add to the big butt, not just the Brazilian butt lift, but the big butt, the big butt girls. You know, the big bottom girls in the world, and then add the four-inch nails. Oh, my the, God. The, four, the fingernails. And, and, oh, and now let's just think about, put those two together. Long before the butt lifts, we just had big bottom girls. And I I had a friend, and she was like, I can't do it unless I'm at home. I can't get clean. Yeah, so, no. All, like, all, I mean, it ha- it just... It blows my mind. Would she get poop in her fingernails? Uh, uh, I, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Julie, what if she has... Uh, what about the, all the rage, which is the, the, the claw look? Yeah, the, the sharp sharpened ones. nails. Talons. Exactly. I mean, well, maybe they can dig it out and they get a little cleaner. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, 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 you're ripping your ass off. That's just nasty. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, can you... Can, now. I mean, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, Maybe the thing to do, yeah, Julie, is start a controlled fire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That's gnarly. All right. Thank you, Julie. Jesus. Appreciate it. We'll see you. Wow. It was like when you had your broke your wrists. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I right. It, you had to learn some skills. It was tough. It was very difficult. So with a, a butt lift, um, do they are there injections? I mean, are there sometimes like, there are implant style. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't know what actually went into the. There's a couple the of different things. Uh, Nick, there was a woman locally who got who got arrested because one of the people she oh, had yeah. treated for one of these butt lifts, she used something basically like sacrete. Well, remember, remember she was doing it out of like a hotel. Out of a room. hotel. She was room. doing it illegally. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the lift is different than uh, the injections or the implants. You know, maybe the lift is a dip. Maybe we're using the wrong terminology. It's possible. Here. So you said the Brazilian butt lift, right? Yes. So that's um, the definition is surgery where a doctor transfers fat from your belly, hips, lower okay. back, or thighs to your buttocks. Okay. All right. So are that's able, that's that. Yeah. Are they able to use that same technology for like uh, breast enlargement? Or is it straight up like it's yeah, I don't know. silicone? I've That's never. Good... I, they should be right. Never heard of that. Or maybe the, maybe that yeah. part of the body rejects it. Yeah. You know what they do? Impressive. We've talked. We've seen. You've seen these craziest. Listen, for some reason, there's a lot of Russian body built, quote unquote bodybuilders who get this synth oil mm. injected into their. Oh, you've gross. seen these guys yeah. who, who are not built anywhere else on their body, yeah. but have Popeye sized yeah. b- yeah. biceps. It's, it's a thing. And it's dangerous. That, and that's, you want to talk about dysmorphia? Yeah. That's another dysmorphia. But they never use silicon for breast implants, right? It's, all, it's always saline at this point? At, at this point, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. silicon yeah. got uh, banned a long time ago, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right about that. So, yeah, well, there's a picture, Kathy. You've seen these guys up online, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, it's, oh. it's it's insane, it's and it's weird. horrendous for you. So, if someone sitting next to you has a large hiney, they might smell like poop. Just to give you a heads up. <laughs> Do you have? Tr- it's a nice thing to if you're sitting on the on the bus. It's after today. And you're sitting oh, next to someone. God. Do you have trouble wiping your ass? Oh my god! All right, we're moving on. Totally presbo. All right, so there are soaring numbers of grieving pet owners that are freeze drying their pets Mm -hmm. when they die so they don't have to say goodbye. And unlike traditional taxidermy where an animal's hide may be removed and their shape uh, distorted, freeze drying is more natural and can better preserve their appearance. And you were looking at the pictures. I was looking at the pictures. It does 
it does look yeah. good. I, I as a and you're a pet owner. We're all pet, you know have pets um, or have had pets. I, I don't think I could do this. I don't think I would do this. No, either. I don't think no. I could do this. Uh, Chuck Rupert, who owns a company called Second Life Freeze Dry. Uh, said he typically preserves up to 90 animals a year, including dogs, cats, hamsters, hedgehogs, guinea pigs, ferrets, squirrels, minks, and even rattlesnakes. Yeah, I'm doing it to my dad, but I don't think I could do it to him. Oh, <laughs> dear God. Uh, this service does not come cheap, and depending on the animal's size, the cost can range from 1200 to $4,000 no, and up. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's pricey, but but it's that's not... It's the shell, you know? Yeah. So what we do is we will cremate the pets. We put them... Uh, you know, in, in a decorative box or maybe get a paw print and, and something nice. And that's what mm -hmm. you do. But could you imagine going into a room, especially with us, yeah. we'd have like a room full of seven or eight dead yeah. freeze-dried pets. Birds and cats. Yeah. Second Life Freeze Dry is located in Merle, Pennsylvania, by the way. Uh, but requests come in from all over the U.S. and abroad, including a cat mailed from Singapore and a dog from Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, explain how he <laughs> handles uh, foreign orders. Uh, Rupert said right? it can be done, but it's costly. I have to send them a broker who can clear customs. Uh, the process of freeze drying is a laborious one. Uh, it's really interesting, by the way. Uh, typically, smaller animals take up to four to five months to preserve, and larger animals can take up to a year. I mean, at uh, that point, preserve. you've forgotten about your pet. Right, yeah, you moved you, on to the you, next you one. Your new one. Yeah. And now you're going to freak out your new pet by bringing yeah. home a, a, a motionless dead pet. Yeah, Jesus! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this freaks me out more than the BBL stuff. <laughs> is this what you have in mind for me? <laughs> is this how it's going to go? The process involves removing the animal's organs, uh, filling the body cavity with natural wood What's filler. What's with before your cat? The, the animal is sewn back up. And what do you do with it? Do you display it around the house? Uh, right. that, then he places the animal in a pose that the pet owner requested, often sleeping with their eyes closed, sitting with their eyes open, or wearing a happy expression. Not me. Imagine them putting a big smile yeah. on your dog's face. I would have my cat standing, holding a top hat and cane. Mm. You know, there are uh, very well-preserved bodies, dead bodies, uh, like uh, Lennon's one yes, of them. Yes, yeah. Uh, That's right. Ava Perone. No, yeah, not yeah, John yeah. Lennon. <laughs> Oh, uh, Vladimir Ava, Ulyich. Ava Perone. Who else? Uh, Vladimir oh, Ulyich. Vladimir. Um, uh, um, the, there's a priest. Uh, the priest right here. Yeah. 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 You can actually go see them. Some of these are on display. It's mm -hmm. pretty weird, you know, but. Did, um, it yeah. is. So I'm, uh, we've gone on our, on our last, uh, on our vacation, we went to a, a place in Austria where they had these kind of bodies and it, it is, um. It's weird. Do they do it in North Korea to their leaders too? I want to say that maybe they, the last one uh, Kim Jong is preserved. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Possibly, on that, but. I'm sure that they they would have that level of um, of worship and uh, or at least oh. ego. By the way, locally, Saint John Newman, like yeah. Newman University. Uh, yeah, is that who that's named after? Yeah, and I remember going and seeing. I feel like it was in like third grade, something like that. Uh, you saw was, his body. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a field trip. Wow, and I remember like I'm like it, he just looks like like wax. Case I went okay. to, so in one of the churches we went to, I believe it was in Aus Austria, they had um, they had uh, bodies that they'd removed from that were treated like this from the Vatican that were both in there laying horizontally while you're sitting in the pews, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's, like, it's freaky. Yeah, it's very it's a freaky. freaky. Hang on, I have uh, Amy who has a free dry, uh, freeze dried pet. Hi, Amy. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Amy. Well, I had, it wasn't really a pet. So when I was in college, the summer I was working, there was a woman whose son was a taxidermist, and he knew she hated cats, but people knew he was a taxidermist. So when they would have sometimes animals that would die, they would ask him if he wanted them. So there was a kitten that had died, and he took the kitten and made it like look really fierce as fierce as a kitten can look on a log like on a branch and then tied a little bow around his neck and gave it to her and she's like i don't know what to do with this <laughs> <laughs> and i said i will take it to school because my room at school has a mantle and so i had <laughs> it on my mantle and of course it freaked lots of people out yeah um, yeah so but this these are meant to look like your your pet is in repose and it's the, your, the way your pet would be around the house and apparently even as good as some taxidermists are the freeze drying process makes them look uncannily alive it was weird i mean because it was freeze dried they said they could only do it with smaller pets right okay time, so yeah. they use that mm -hmm. process then 
But I don't think that I would want any. I've had lots and lots of pets, and I do not think that I would want them around. For I just think that'd be creepy. But the mm. kitten was kind yeah. of funny, except that <laughs> when um, I had it stored in the attic, my dad threw it away. Oh my god! Sure, yeah. <laughs> to your dad, same. If you have a picture of it, by the way, send it along. You I love it. Stored I'm in an the animal attic. lover, but Thank I, you, Amy. I can't wait to see that. Listen, my dad for the longest time he he caught a uh, a sailfish, <laughs> yeah, uh, and had it mounted and that hung on our wall much to my mother's <laughs> chagrin <laughs> hung on the wall forever was it beautiful or not it, i thought it was really cool i, I think, mean it was yeah. huge and it was really pretty and they're big and blue and yeah, yeah. it's one yeah, of the most this, mounted yeah. fish because they are that pretty and they have that huge dorsal fin right and so but i remember we had it had it had gone through the ringer because we had moved a few times, so they got chips and yeah. breaks here and everything. And I remember coming home one day and just seeing that tail sticking up out of a trash can <laughs> That's hilarious. in front of our house. I'm like, yeah. damn, finally broke. Uh, Mom got rid of that thing, man. That's oh, hilarious. and if a cell phone existed back then, you would have snapped a oh, photo totally, of that. Totally, yeah. Hilarious. I want to catch a minnow and just mount and that. And mount it? Yeah. 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 I'm sure people have done that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. It's hard. Why to are you mount. looking at me like that? I was guy. just thinking, should we do? Should we do that? Or like a goldfish? Yes. Yep. It's tough to do it that small. You got. Yeah, they actually have to remove all the internal yeah. organs. Oh, was that right? Hide oh, off yeah. and stuff. I, I looked into taxidermy and how that works for a while. It's a very. Well, remember we had that gal, yeah. and she was yeah. top notch. Came yeah. on the show a few times. She was awesome. She was a taxidermist, and uh, isn't and the film? She had an Instagram account. Yeah. I, I followed it for a while, but I, I've not seen her no, in ages. She's really good. So yeah. you, you dabbled with it. Isn't the film material quite often sawdust? Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. filler like that. I, I I just looked into the process of it, and it was way too involved, all the chemicals and stuff that you have to use to nah. treat that stuff. I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, all right, so I don't even know if this is uh, linear to what we're talking about. Um, but I just had my dog groomed, and I was at the groomer, and there was so much pet hair there. Yeah. What do they do with it? They just throw Good that question. away? Could they Cotton be candy. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. I literally with they, our with our dog Kizzy, yeah. we could build another cat. But they really could use that. They could recycle that for stuff, right? I don't know. If only, if only the the it, it poured it over to human wigs. You yeah. know, like yeah. uh, wait, I just remembered this story. My cousins, uh, they love their animals. Like loved their animals. Um, uh, like and sexually? No, but just like <laughs> yeah. so much so that when they passed. Like that professor. And I'm pretty, wait, I'm pretty sure that they've done it with more than one dog. Um, when the dog passed, they have the hair shaved off and they put it into a blanket. They make it into a blanket. Oh, Swear to God. Really? I was at their house um, and, and I, they had the blanket out and they were like, oh, that's. Why whatever. not make their paws into back scratches? Hang on. I, I have a question. That's they, fluffy. One cat had enough hair to make an entire dog, blanket? Two dogs. Two, two dogs. dogs. Yeah. Okay. What, two separate blankets. Like when their dog passed um, years ago, they made the blanket. So and then, it was just the hair, not their hide, not their. Like this. No, like they the, ate that. Like the skin like the and all skin. that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I pressed and I don't know. All I know is it was a blanket and I was freaked out and I didn't want to go okay. near it. There are service, there are businesses that will do that. I've seen them that, the will, hide? that will take the hide and turn them into like a pillowcase yeah. or, or whatever. I could see Listen, that. I get it. So we, we have a little bit of Chelsea's fur. Uh, in, in a little baggie, just to remember kind of what it looked like, right. yeah. and and with her with her ashes and and that whole thing. But when you're, <laughs> it's like, hey, this this that billiard that billiard uh, ball is uh, my old my old dog's eyeball. Oh, serious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, it, it was like folded nice and like laid on a bench in their living room. So like, it who's was that? Well, that's yeah. uh, that's display. Fluffy. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, there's Fluffy. Yeah. But like, what if you you know you shaved all their hair off? Because like Reggie, for instance, he's so fluffy. Like, you shave it all off. You clean it right. And then, like, maybe make Cotton it a, candy. No, pillow stuffing. W I'm not going to eat my dog's fur. <laughs> would you, though? Would you? I don't know. Maybe. Would it be a little disconcerting? Hang on. Yeah. I don't know. Kim is a dog groomer. Okay. And Casey, she can tell you what they do with the dog hair. Hi, Kim. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. You guys rock. Thank oh. you. Uh, Kim, what's the name of your business? Um, I work at Riverside Grooming in Spring City. Okay. And you guys see a lot of clients? We do, yeah. And we've actually had clients request their dog's hair at the end of the groom, and they take it home and let it go in their yard for birds to make nests out of. 
Oh, okay, yes, I've, I've heard about that. That's why uh, I've seen that. Yeah, my my uh, wife will will um will uh, brush the dog outside yeah, because you, apparently that's what and when it, you take it out of the hairbrush outside, the, you know the pet brush, uh, squirrels, birds, whatever, they'll come and take it and make nests out of it. Oh, well, I did see one squirrel yeah, so turning it into. Well, I do that quite a bit, quite a bit actually. But Kim, what do you guys do with the stuff you sweep up off the floor? Yeah, so most of the time we throw it away. Um, yeah. But I also we. Our shop is right next to a river park with a big trail on the river. Um, like once a month or so, I'll take a big bag down and just open it up and kind of let it go for the birds and everything. All right. That's that pretty sense. cool. Did you make like a hair that. pie? Yeah, but I have heard of people selling the dog hair, but I don't know in what capacity or if that's even legal. So. I, I wonder that. I wonder that. So, so environmentally, you, I would wonder because and Nick, you're right, and Casey, uh, the birds, um, you know, and, and other animals that we use the hair. I wonder long term if there's any issue. I yeah. mean, it's something I've always heard that is absolutely fine to do. Like, could you get in trouble right. dumping pet hair yeah. outside, like in, in large amounts? Right. Would that, would that be considered littering? Of right. Sorts? Right. I don't know. And I also don't understand why my dog loves so much sticking his head out the window in the car, right? Loves that wind in his face. Loves it. I love it. <laughs> but can't stand the hair dryers at the pet room. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah, that they would react that way. Well, maybe the noise freaks him it's out. Pr it's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Not sure. All right. Well, anyway, I think that that's all we're going to have time for. Holy Presbo. Yeah, it's 7.45, so we've got uh, the B-File and some other things to get to. Okay, I've been told the contest page is working now. Right. Yay! At uh, WMMR.com, and if you tune in uh, to our YouTube stream, uh, you will see something behind me that could get you some tickets to see a movie. The movie is called Imaginary, by the way. Uh, so if you get a chance to take a peek, uh, we're doing this for our YouTube viewers this morning. All right, we're going to take a break and get the B-File a little later on this morning. John Blaris is stopping by. That's right. Interesting story to tell. We'll be right back. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. By the way, I wanted to mention this real quick. Uh, <clears throat> Cardboard Classic made on made it onto the Weather Channel's Instagram yes. account. It's yes. pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were talking about it. It is the mm. warmest... February on record. Wow. Like, I, I I assume that's nationally. I don't know if that means the world. Maybe it means the world. But nonetheless, they were covering uh, the fact that even though it was still the warmest February on record, <laughs> we still managed to pull this event off. Yeah. Uh, they did, however, wrongfully indicate that uh, Clutch and his crew with the swing uh, were the winners of the event. Uh, they did win Best Tito's yes, sled. they did, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, of course, the, the gang that, that brought us the Wawa sled were the uh, winners of uh, best design, which is the you know the big uh, uh, the big prize at the event. But uh, it was pretty it was cool, cool to see that, right? Uh, to see the coverage on the uh, the Weather Channel's uh, Instagram page. So we're, thank you, Weather Channel. We were just talking about the Weather Channel with Pierre. Yeah. yeah. All right. So real quick, I'm going to do a couple of short outs before we go to the bizarre file. Uh, I needed to, oh, yes, from uh, our friend uh, Jim Antasn, our sales Yes, uh, the Yoda impersonator. Uh, he was <laughs> yeah. spot on Yoda. Uh -huh. Spot on. Uh, he wanted me to send a shout out to Allison uh, Zambon, who is a huge fan. And uh, he was at a, I think it was a swimming event yesterday. I ran into her. She's, uh, I think, hearing on, I have a text from, she's a swim mom at Cherokee High School. Oh, nice. So here's a shout out. And thank you very much, uh, Allison, for listening. And then I have one that's an email, and it says, my name's Ed Driscoll. Oh, I know who Ed is. He lives in St. Louis and listens to us. He emails in from time to time. So I'd like to request a birthday shout out uh, from my wonderful wife, Patty Driscoll. Her birthday is on March 9th. She turns 50. Would you please help me wish her happy birthday with a Josh Groban birthday shout out oh. on either March 7th or 8th. Thank you for everything you do, as always, rage on. Uh, MMR fan Ed Driscoll. So can we do that? No, I'm that... not going to do that. Nope, you nope. Raise me up so I <laughs> and then we get. All right, there you go. I worked it right. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. exactly. Appreciate it. It's all good. All right, we have bizarre file stories. Here we go. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's bizarre, bizarre file. Brought to you by Horizon Services. Horizon's licensed plumbers have same-day 24-7 solutions. Plus, they're offering $50 off any repair. You can schedule your visit today at horizonservices.com forward slash WMMR. Uh, here's a local story. Police in South Jersey are trying to find a man 
at the center of an apparent social media stunt. Uh, Glassboro police uh, shared pictures of the man who they say walked into the Heritage store and then proceeded to dunk his head in a large bin of pickles. Oh, I saw oh, this. this. Guy. Dude, yeah. this could be you. Uh, it You're could a big be me. pickle fan. I'd be totally happy with doing that. Uh, the story then had the story then had to remove the pickles for sanitary reasons, as you might imagine. Sure, yeah. Uh, police say that he was recording himself as he did it, making them believe he was doing the uh, doing it, and then posting it on social media for attention. Uh, it got the attention from investigators, who now hope to track him down. Anyone with information is asked to call. Uh, the Glassboro police. This is like the people who are going into the uh, supermarkets and lifting the lids on ice cream. And licking it. Licking it. Yep. Oh. Don't like it. A former cheese manufacturer and the company that he owned pleaded guilty on Tuesday to misdemeanor charges related to a 2016-2017 outbreak of listeria oh, man. that hospitalized eight people and killed two. Jesus. Yeah, so Jesus. Uh, they pleaded guilty. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, Johannes Volto and uh, Volto Creamery of Walton, New York, pleaded guilty to one misdemeanor count of causing the introduction of adulterated food in interstate commerce. Uh, Volto Creamery's soft raw cheese was being this uh, was behind the sole multi-state outbreak of listerosis in 2017, resulting in nationwide recall of the raw milk cheeses sold by the company. That's terrific! And listen to this, Kathy. You will love this. <laughs> FDA investigators found workers at the creamery did not wash their arms before using them to stir and break up cheese curds, oh, including one employee with multiple cuts and abrasions on his arms. I don't, this, I don't like it. I don't Swabs like this. of Volto's Creamery repeatedly tested no. positive for the bacteria over the three-year period. Kathy, one I of the people. workers pleasured himself into the cheese, and then another one had just had a fresh Brazilian butt lift. By the way, Kathy, don't ever go into a no. uh, a restaurant kitchen. No. Oh, I'll tell you, I, I say this all the time. <laughs> I worked at the Dilworth Town Inn, and there was a reason I worked there. Their kitchen was pristine. All the right. way that they cleaned it at night, I was like, I'll eat their food. No. But yes, I am aware, especially the time we had to walk over the nachos that were uh -huh. on the floor in the kitchen of that one restaurant. Yeah. yeah. It was but a I mean, little also, alarming. People and their bare hands yeah. and stuff like totally. that. There's, there's a lot of that that goes on. You there's know? things that I don't think about. I like to go out to a restaurant and block so it out of your mind. I block yeah. it out. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So a sentencing date will be set by the magistrate uh, judge in Syracuse, New York, by the way. By the way, I had a, um, I went out to lunch with uh, the boss yesterday and I, I bit into a pickle oh, no. and it tasted weird to me. And there were two pickles there. And I'm like, can you please bite this pickle? He would not do it because I was tasting mothballs and I needed somebody else to taste what? it. No. Yeah. So that to I tell you, just, I'm like, am I tasting, are we tasting? I didn't want to tell him what I tasted, but he wouldn't do it. Well, cause that's the thing. It's like, this is disgusting. Taste it. Yeah. No, who wants to do that? <laughs> Preston would have done it. I would have done it. Yeah. Uh, an elderly woman was left dangling several feet in the air by her coat after it became snagged in a shop security shutter. And the video is hilarious. Oh, no. The pictures of her hanging in the air is too this funny. This isn't good. Uh, security video oh. captured the moment that Ann Hughes uh, was hoisted skyward as the shutter outside of the ah. best, best one convenience store in Wales uh, had happened. So Ms. Hughes... <laughs> who had worked as a cleaner at the shop for seven years, had been leaning against the storefront as she waited for the shop to open. A video captures her turn in surprise as she realized her coat was snagged. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, she attempts to... Here, Kathy, look at the video. She attempts to cling to a bin oh. <clears throat> and to her um, her bag, but her legs are lifted oh, high in the God. air. Oh, no. No. Staff soon heard her shouts and for help, and they lowered the shutter while one worker rushed to her aid and lifted her free of the shutter. She's lucky it didn't uh, rip and right, fall right. flat on her face. My brush is smothering me. Uh, footage of the incident has gone viral, <laughs> racking up more than 18 million or 1.8 million views. Uh, Miss Hughes, who reportedly was shaken up and not injured in the incident, has joked about what happened, telling the BBC, I'll never hear the end of it. I'll have to handle the fame. Oh Always God. have my makeup on, she said. Uh, this is scary. A 19-year-old who was a quarter mile away from a fiery explosion in Michigan was struck in the head and killed by oh a God. canister that flew into the air from the blast. Isn't that insane? It's crazy. So there, we have a listener who actually lives out there, yeah. uh, and he shares stuff with me on Instagram all the time. Uh, his name is uh, Dave Zawacki. He sent me this yesterday. Uh, that Dave I mean, Zawacki. it's absolutely It's Zawacki what it's happened. It's Zawacki. 
And so, and so this piece from that far away hit him. Mm. Uh, butane containers caught fire Monday night at a vaping distributing company about 25 out miles outside of Detroit. The vape company recently received a semi load of butane containers and uh, over half of that was still at the facility as of Monday night. The company also had pallets of nitrous and lighter fluid and over 100,000 vape pens with lithium batteries inside. Uh, the fire chief, Tim Duncan, described it as a tremendous amount of fire. He said this by far was the biggest one that I've ever seen. Yeah, I was uh, working in the factory and uh, it was bad. Uh, the blast shook uh, cars that were one to two miles away. The blast sent debris, including blades, oh, flying into the air. The debris field was likely a half a mile in uh, in size. Uh, investigators said that they were going to identify quantities of canisters and other broken uh, and other materials on site to determine if any codes were broken or not. Wow. All right, and then we'll do one more story and wrap it up. A uh, police in Russia are questioning a man who drunkenly rode a horse into an apartment building at 3 a.m. and presented it to his wife to make amends for a fight. I have brought you a horse. Footage of the bizarre scene shows both the large pile, uh, both a large pile of feces that the animal left in the building's entranceway, which neighbors are reportedly not happy about. You are moron. And the man's many failed attempts to climb onto the horse. Uh, at one point, the man apparently thought better of trying to fit the horse into the elevator to get to his fifth floor apartment and rode up instead. Uh, local media identifies the man as 33-year-old Sergei Antipov and reports that he took the horse from a farm where he used to work, hoping to show up as Prince Charming <laughs> and make up with his wife. Didn't work, did it? She subsequently recorded the confused-looking horse, which she quipped was a gift for International Women's Day on March 8th, inside their tiny apartment. She said, here's a horse standing in my house. Uh, thankfully, the horse is now said to be back at its farm. And that is what I have in the Bizarre File for you. I have some good news for you, Preston. <laughs> the tell. pickle dunking guy, <laughs> yeah. he has turned himself in. Hey. The, uh, the Glassboro police uh, posted this last night, and uh, there are uh, several pickle puns in their post. They talk about relishing the community's help. Uh, Steve, they said at one point that uh, they found what he was doing Delightful. Delightful. Ah. But apparently uh, the dude that they, uh, you know, was caught on camera and whatever, he took a accountability for his actions, turned himself in. And, Nick, right. and now he's in his cell jerking the gherkin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. And there you go. Uh, we do need to take a break because John Belaris is stopping by in yes. just a moment. And the documents have been released about his whole... Uh, Russian mob encounter that we, I don't know if you remember it or not, we'll rehash the entire story because it's pretty oh, yeah. wild. It is elaborate, yeah. Uh, and uh, he's going to be in here in a few minutes, so we'll chat with John in a little bit. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. Before we introduce our next guest, uh, Steve, you had approached me and said that you had uh, seen a story uh, about uh, some documents being released. Well, I follow our next uh, guest on Twitter, and some stuff came up. It actually happens to be very adept at weather. Yeah. So, but he posted mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm like, uh, legal documents that apparently had been um, um, opened up. Uh, and uh, he was reminding uh, people who follow him of this uh, this story that actually was first sort of revealed in, in some level on our show many, many years ago. Yeah. And I was looking in the comments section and a number of people were saying, I remember hearing about this years ago on Preston and Steve. Yeah. So it seemed a likely wraparound to get this man, and I think you know what we're talking about, yeah. on the show. And and maybe maybe you're new to the area, or maybe you're, you're tuning in from elsewhere. I may not know, but uh, our, our next guest is a long time uh, for, uh, uh, meteorologist. meteorologist. Dear God, I can't think of the word. Meteorologist on uh, NBC10. Uh, he's now segued into the world of luxury real estate. Mm -hmm. Doing damn well. Doing very well, but he is here with us this morning. Our old friend, John Belaris. Hey. Hey. Is with us. How you doing, man? Hey, listen, it's so great to see you guys. <laughs> it's great to see you. You know, I can't even believe it. It's like Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I come in, you yeah. look the same, you yeah. look great. You look the you same, look, a little yeah. more scruffy because yeah, you don't scruffy. have to be as clean shaven for TV. I don't anymore. have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. right now. I don't but have you to, look the same. But you're dapper as always. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, I have a video shoot in the afternoon. Oh, okay. ah, nice. Right, so I, I shoot in the afternoon. We do a lot of high end luxury, so I got to yeah. be in my uh, 
real estate professional mode. <laughs> gotcha. But you seem to love it. Otherwise, I'd come in here with shorts and just be my normal self. <laughs> right, yeah, totally. Right. All right, so to rehash real quick, just a, 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 a time frame, um, when were you, uh, when did you wrap up at, at NBC10? How uh, long ago was it that? Was, uh, and it was, the last one was Fox, Fox 29. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fox, Fox 29, 29, 29 that's right, yes. on, uh, I was pulled out of the studio on Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> what? Ten minutes before I was due to go on the Seriously? Uh, 2000, December 2010. You were, ten. So you made it to work that day. Oh, I was ready to You're go on the air. About to go on air. They walked me out with security. Oh, oh no! I man. said, "Can I grab some of my photographs and stuff?" They said, "No." And I oh. had all my, you know, my my daughter's photos, some a lot of like the stuff that I, you know, my. Who was work the stuff. news yeah. director? Was it Kingsley? Uh, yes, it was mm. Kingsley. Uh, Patrick Paolini was the GM, and uh, it was a very bad day. I'm yeah. sure. You had had, so to, to frame this, it, it, 2010, okay. you, when we started, uh, you know, with Y100, Preston, Marilyn, and Steve, and, and you you were, um, you were the most popular um, personality in Philadelphia. They have a yeah. thing called Q rating. You had the yeah. highest Q rating. And um, you you deigned to uh, very generously come on our show and give it some cred. And you actually, we struck up a friendship. So over the course of those years, you would always come out and support. And we have we've been enjoying a great relationship with all the the people and and in Philadelphia, a lot of the news people are our celebrities. Yeah. Um, and that's you know ebbed and flowed over the years. And then this thing, this um, um, sort of um, mm. falling dominoes uh, series of events occurs in your life that sends it all into a turmoil. Now we've always been you know um, supportive of you, but uh, uh, you know. And we said sometimes you go on Twitter, sometimes, you know, and you, you're the first to admit that you'll, you might, you know. I say too much. Say too much. <laughs> but in this case, I think, um, I think it's wild to revisit. It was 2012. Yeah. You go on a trip to Miami. No, nope, it was actually 20, March of, March 25th of 2010. 2010. Okay. Okay. So before Christmas Eve. Before that, Chris, yeah. right. So all, all right. of these shenanigans in Miami happen, happen before you're done at Fox. Yes. Okay. Well, that was part of the reason you were done right. at Fox. Yes, that was the major reason. But what happened, I think, John, and looking back on this, I think because you are, um, you are very well liked. You were very well liked, and 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 of course we still do, and many do. Uh, and you had this perception as sort of like a, like a, a ladies' man who liked to go out and have fun. That that people just kind of turned maybe a sneering eye to what, and we even made yeah, fun of what was going on, not realizing, and re, you know, as I reviewed the story and reviewed what had happened, and involved you being drugged, and we'll get mm -hmm. into some of the specifics, yeah. being taken care of by a then starting to grow and entrench Russian mafia mm -hmm. here in, in Florida, mm -hmm. you could have ended up dead. Oh, yeah. They actually, I got a call from one of the federal agents I was working with, mm. Uh, first, I got a call from my landscaper. I had a, I had a home in East Hampton at the time in, 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 on Long Island. And he goes, uh, Mr. John, you've got people packing heat on your property. I thought it was the, the feds that I work with. This one in particular, I'll just name him Alex. Right. Right, because I was working to get the bad guys. And he said, no, it's not us. You need to leave. Whoa. Oh, my All God. Right? I was in Philly at the time. And then I went down to Miami to, to go on trial because I already, my grand jury testimony indicted that orchestrated Russian crime mob. So also, you, also American Express was indicted. As, as well. With yes, that. there was two, two separate cases. All right, so let me ask you this, uh, to take us through the, and I, I have yeah, sort we need of the, to start the, the chronology. Yeah. You are there, you're in You're mm -hmm. in Florida, you're going out for, for Miami, you're going out for an evening. Mm -hmm. You are approached, you're looking for a good time, uh, two model type women approach mm -hmm. you and yeah. take, take it from there. Yeah. So um, I'm at the Delano, okay? I went mm -hmm. to the sushi bar there, chef's bar, where you can sit by yourself. My co-anchor, Chris Raggy, was not able to make it. We had a planned trip there, right? right? To go to Miami, play golf, and go to Mr. Chow's. Chris got called away for the NCAA tournament, so I'm in Miami by myself. I'm going to wait for Chris. And I said, I'm not going to eat at Mr. Chow's, where we made a reservation. I went to the Delano. So as I'm sitting at the chef's, table. I don't know this. I found this out from the investigation. They target you from the watch you wear and the shoes you have on. Right. Okay. They and this is something that they, this is something they organized. They, and in fact, it was described as their sort of cornerstone, their benchmark way of robbing people. They had trained to do that yeah. since birth in right. Estonia. Yeah. They target, they went to the bar, they take a picture 
of your credit card. They send that back to the boss and they say, Target. Okay. So that was the target. So they kept asking me, aren't you a TV presenter? People coming up to me said, listen, I do the weather, yeah. And then I said, I'm not a TV presenter. Because I yeah. got I was getting a little bit annoyed because I really didn't want to speak to them. Right, 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 hang right. on, hang on. Let's back up just a second. So women approach you. Mm -hmm. they've, they've noticed that you've got the watch, the shoes, yeah. and all that. And say, say they just sit down and start to strike up a conversation. No, they saw me walk over to the Oak Bar. Okay. And the bartender behind the bar was a... A Philadelphia bartender that I knew, I forgot his name now, yeah, yeah. but he was behind the bar. Okay. And then when the people are coming up to me and say, hey, what's the weather? Uh, and the girls are saying, oh, you're a weather presenter? I said, no. He goes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's okay. on the weather in Philly. Anyway. But the, the bartenders are not in on it? No. Okay. Not this bartender. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's a friend. You're not, you know, no, that's, Philadelphia. That, that's not right. this bartender. So I, I bought him each a drink, right? A glass of Pinot Grigio. And, uh, you know, they said, you're so nice, you're so nice, you're such a nice American. The other Americans are slobs. Yeah. I said, why would anyone be a slob? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're nice. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you back. Right. And, so, they're, and they're, they're picked for, because they're attractive. They're beautiful, yeah, yeah. but sophisticated. Right, yeah. Not over the top, right. you know, yeah. hanging out or anything like that. They right. look really like, you know, sophisticated women. Yeah. They really did. So I walked back to the pool bar. They said, can we come with you? I said, you could go anywhere you like. Yeah. They said, but we can't get through security. I said, well, I can get through security. And the security guy knows me, and I just go through security at the pool bar at the Delano. So I'm sitting at the pool bar. I'm talking to other people. They keep saying, why don't you join us for a shot? I said, I don't want to do a shot. Yeah. So finally, the one gets behind me. i got to remember, I'm sitting on a chair in the pool. One gets behind me, starts rubbing my shoulders. The other one gets in front of me, says, well, open your mouth, just do one shot first, and I did the shot. Right. Oh, my God. So let me ask. Um, and that shot had? Had something in it. Yeah, it, it's it was a making. It was drug. You were slipped yeah. to making. It was drug. Right. Now, did you uh, end up seeing any uh, video footage of this? Uh, of there... course I did. Okay. I right. worked with the feds undercover agent, uh, uh, a great guy. Wow. Uh, he, he infiltrated the mob. Yeah. Go ahead. No, because um, uh, in this room, you and I are the only ones who ever been slipped to Mickey. Uh, I got mm. roofie, but uh, at the time, I didn't realize it. I didn't you don't know, know it. You no, know, you don't. Like, all I know, and what's funny about that is I was with you earlier in the day. Oh, it was maybe on a I slipped it. It was him. <laughs> it was on, uh, he, got, he liked it so much. So you, you, these women do this. Then the, the evening progresses, and later on, you wake up in your hotel room with a piece of artwork. Right. They said, do you want to come with us to a Haitian... Uh, charity fundraiser that's being held. There was an earthquake. There was devastation in, in Haiti at the okay. time. I don't think years back. Yep. I said, well, where is this? They said, it's an art gallery, so you should come. I said, okay, I'll go. So, John, at this point, are you starting to feel the effects? Yeah, of, I'm feeling of, a little woozy. Okay, but so I, but you've I'm, been dosed. But I'm still a little bit in control. Okay. And you haven't, you haven't, like, blacked out or lost your memory at this point? This is when I black out. Okay, okay. Yeah. so uh, leaving the Delano? Leaving the Delano. To go to the art? I get in a cab. Okay. Do you remember that? Not really. Okay. okay. But the cab driver was part of the, the, the ring. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Oh. They drive me to a front bar called the Caviar Bar, which is only where they take victims. Okay. The public's not allowed. So you got this whole mechanism in place. Every, they have six different bars right, they right. can take you okay. to. Okay. All right. So they take me to the Caviar Bar. The only thing I remember there is someone holding me up and trying to sign my... Oh, my gosh. Autograph, that, you know, get my, my signature. Okay. I wake up getting yeah. slapped in the face from the girls. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, where am I? Black room. Yeah. Black. Totally black. They, uh, the other guy drags me out into the cab with this huge painting. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when I you... Said, I said, <laughs> I'm like kind of figure, trying to figure things out. And the next thing I know, swear to God. I wake up in the morning in my hotel with red wine on my shirt, lipstick on my cheek, with this big ass painting next to my bed. And John, when you told us this story initially, we were like, we're all like, we're, we're chuckling and we're like, it uh, sounds funny. It seems, and you yeah. even like, it sounds com comical, it sounds unbelievable. But what yeah. they do then is mm -hmm. they have the girls to sh to kind of create the image that they're on the up and up. Right. You, you left your glasses with us. We'd like to return no, them. Here's what they, I woke up and I said, what the hell happened? And then I said, where are my sunglasses? Very expensive sunglasses, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I said, 
hmm, something's not right. What's this painting? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I look to see if I have any receipts. Yeah. I don't see any receipts. Oof. I go to the pool, swim, come back. They leave a message on my phone, on the hotel phone. Yeah. I was staying at the Font the Blue. Oh, hey, we accidentally took your sunglasses. We'd like to return them. I go, oh, good, I got you on the phone. Yeah. Marino's. What's this painting? She goes, oh, you bid very heavily on this painting. I go, I bid on this painting. Huh. I said, where's the receipt? There's no receipt. How much did I pay for this painting? If, if I paid for it, I can write it off. Yeah. If I don't have a receipt, I can't write it off. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't like it? I said, no, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't even get this on a plane. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They go, okay, we'll take the painting back. We'll give you your sunglasses. I said, really? Yeah. They said, yeah. So that disarms you. Yeah. So you, you think, think okay, so if there's part of a scam, they're not, they, they want to leave. Once you commit the crime, you leave and you don't have any, uh, any further. Right, who yeah. calls you for right. a voicemail right, and right. says, oh, we're sorry, we took your sunglasses. Right, right. Wait, real quick. Mm -hmm. So what is the scam here? Just the, the money that they're taking out of your account? They already it, were taking. Part two is where okay. the scam swings through fully, though, correct? Fully. Yeah. Part two is when. Okay, okay. Blue pits the fan. I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Right. Yeah. No. All Poopy. right. Poopy hits the fan. Cocky mm -hmm. duty. So I said, oh, okay. All right, good. Return it. I'm staying at the Fontaine Blue, as you probably know. Uh, and you could pick it up. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. They said, they'll come. we'll meet you in the lobby and you could bring down the painting. Six o'clock goes, 6.30, quarter to seven. I have their number. I call. Where, you, where are you? Yeah. Well, we're at the Delano. I said, you're at the Delano. I said, why don't you come here? I'll give you the, you know, I need the, he goes, no, bring, bring it here. I said, I'm not going to bring the painting there. I'll pick up my glasses. Yeah. Uh, they're $1,000 sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have your sunglasses. I go to the Dell Dome. This is still daylight. Yeah. So I'm talking to them. They have a cigarette outside, and you're allowed to smoke then outside on the beach. Uh, the Delano is an outdoor pool and beach. So I have, uh, again, Pinot Grigio is dangerous. <laughs> I, I go upstairs to use the bathroom, come back down, and they said, hey, we're going to take you to get your receipt where you bought the painting at the art gallery around the corner. I said, great, I'll go there. Yeah. Guess what? Mm. This is what I remember. Sitting in the cab, waving me in like this to come in. It was the caviar bar, by the way. Mm -hmm. Come in. I'm like, no, you come out. Right. You come in. I go in. Last thing I know is they're handing me the shot. I thought it was glasses. Oh. That's the last thing I know. Really? How, so how did they knock you out there? They drugged my glass oh my when God. I went up to use the bathroom. Uh, a very powerful drug. Yeah. So, zombie state. Right. Your eyes could be awake and you, you don't even know what's going on. Okay. You, zombie. And that's where they rang up $43,670 oh <gasps> off your card. Off my card. They would buy uh, wine from the CVS... For ten dollars to fifty dollars, and sell it for two thousand to four thousand dollars to the victims. Eighty-eight other victims, by the way, came right, forward. Right. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, there this was a, many people. There was actually over three hundred. That's why wow. I work closely with the uh, the feds on this. So this this you come to us in this story. This is something that starts to get out, and everyone's going. Uh, and you even you're saying listen, this, sounds, this sounds crazy. We're saying this sounds crazy. And then lo and behold, we find out that uh, we start to see, and you're pushing this information forward to force of course to us that the fbi is very focused in on this very prominent russian european mafia that has taken uh, hold in miami mm -hmm. and the, as you said there are a string of victims they interviewed me and they said would you help us and it would be risking risking some things professionally yeah. you, you risk embarrassment yeah i said listen i have nothing to be embarrassed about i'm a single guy yeah I was ripped off by yeah. 43,000 something. Of course, that's why I reached out to first John Timoney, who was yeah. the ex-police commissioner here. He connected right. me with the FBI, who was now the, he was the commissioner, uh, police commissioner in Florida. And I sat with the feds and I, I took it from there and we started the investigation. And they said, they, and the guy, keep in mind, the um, attorney a prosecutor was the uh, name Richard Gregory. He's no longer, you know, he's retired, but he's the same guy that took down Pablo Escobar right. and Manuel Noriega. Okay, so, so this is a heavy hitter. Heavy hitter. So, heavy hitter. So 2013, mm -hmm. one of them gets convicted, right? I go, my, this is what happened. When I, uh, 
the grand jury testimony put them, put them, they indicted them. That means they got an algo right, show right. up. The feds and, and Gregory said to me, you're probably not going to need to testify in a federal court. They're going to probably try to do some kind of plea deal. Well, lo and behold, they asked me, you, can you testify? So they send you a subpoena to testify as the key witness against the, the mob. Russian mob. The Russian, the Russian mob. mob. The Russian yeah. mob. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget this one day. Okay. So I'm waiting to go on trial. And... They said, let's go through this. Let's go through this. And I said, I don't need to go through this. I know what I remember. I'm going to say, tell the truth. That's all I need to tell you. Okay. I get a phone call from a reporter. A little less than an hour I'm due to stand trial. Go on as a key witness from this Victor. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I got a report here that you crapped your pants. I said, what? Yeah. I said, please. Hey, you got 30 minutes to re rebuke that. I said, I'm about to go on the stand. Right. How, and the feds are with me saying, Who's this? So they're, they're, they're trying to jostle you. Oh, so he put it out anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's out there. So people still come, oh, yeah, you crapped your pants. That right. never happened. But, you know, once it goes out there into that universe, right. mm -hmm. it never, you never get it back. Yeah. Right? Same way with this. People think it was Miami hookers. Right. Right? So they say, oh, you were with hookers. The president of Fox News calls me before I get the ax. He said, listen. What were you doing in Miami with hookers instead of being home with your daughter? I said, I said, Dennis, I was on vacation. I was supposed to meet with Chris Raggy. Yeah. I, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. I, there's a long story to this. Before you react, you got to hear all the facts. I'm just telling you on the face value, what the press did is not what you, it's, it's perception. So this, so this MO, this mm -hmm. has occurred countless times yeah. with other people. Oh, yeah. Other people. So the FBI is putting together this huge case against the Russian mob. Right. So you're watching your, this part of your life fall apart. And then on the other side, and you can understand a business who thinks they have an employee yeah. who could be dynamite trying to distance themselves from it. But you're, no matter what the case, you're getting it from all sides. I let Fox know what was going on. This is exactly what they said to me. Go to HR, Kingston. It's not our problem. You are on vacation. You have nothing to do. You don't represent Fox. I go, right. yeah, I represent Fox. Mm. I represent Fox, and I'm a victim of a crime. Mm. Hey, yeah, right. I go, uh, Kingsley, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you call? I don't, I don't even want to. I don't, I don't need to talk to anyone. Mm. I go to HR. They go, nothing to do with us. Yeah. You're on your own. So, so as this progresses. Wow. They have me sign Fox that I'm not allowed to talk to the press ever and grounds of dismissal. When all this stuff started coming out, it was before I signed anything. So the GM mm. is the one that called the shots. He wasn't even there, said he's fired. He talked to the press and that's when uh, Sarah came down and then the security came down and said, you gotta go. This is Christmas Eve, 2010. Yeah. So, uh, so 2011, what, just for a point of reference, were they in fact hookers? No. Okay. So it's an easy default way to say it's easy. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, right. I've heard like, you know, he was, <laughs> listen to this. Mm. I, American Express, I said, listen, guys, when they, they handle yeah. you a case when yeah. you have a fraud, right? I said, look at my record yeah. for 20 years. Have you ever seen yeah. me uh. log in bills like this? Why didn't you call in and stop it? A <laughs> yeah. right. You're my fraud protector. Yeah. A $43,000. Yeah. yeah. I said, doesn't this seem a little off? John, you know what I think? You know what? Mm -hmm. the, the one who was leading the case for American Express, guess what? The boss, uh, Slavlanko, convinced her, oh, no, we have a very reputable business. You know, he was playing like LeBron yeah. James and serving up everyone. And, yeah. and then she calls me and tells me that. Yeah. I said, I don't even like champagne. <laughs> yeah. I said, did you, are you serious? You have a criminal call you? Did you? Yeah. You wouldn't even speak to the FBI. Honestly, they wouldn't. Or you wouldn't even speak to the police commissioner, T uh, Timothy, or any of the cops about this. Case closed. That was it. So what happened to the- Sued. They were suing me. So what happened the to money. the money? What happened to the, so what happened to the money that you lost? You never recouped it, correct? I sued. Uh, I was being sued for two years. I lost my credit from American Express. I lost my credit, period. Yeah. I lost my career. Um, and uh, I had Chuck Peruto. I hired Chuck Peruto, who's a you know, criminal but yeah. civil too. And we sued. He's not a criminal. He handles criminal cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we countersued American Express. And let me see the date. I got the data. Wait, so, so you didn't yeah. get, they didn't 
give you your money back? They didn't credit yeah. you back? I've got, you want to know what I got? Well, don't go too specifically. Gonna, because he's just going to read the entire affidavit. You know, I'm not going to read it. I'm not gonna read, what I'm going to say is ultimately just... Just say, I won the case. Yeah. Okay. They made me whole again. Okay. Okay. And maybe they gave me 41000 above of what I... Okay. Okay. So okay. here's what I think in in this in looking back on all this because you did lose your career, you did lose a lot, you lost a lot of credibility. Yeah. I lost millions of you dollars. Lo by yeah. Right. So yeah. over the course of time, and a lot of people don't realize, and you see it now. Over, you, you live long enough, and you see this happen to a number of people. And once they start, they can't they can't catch a lifeline. So you're going through all of this, and I think what what happened is that was there was this. Uh, that hooker thing. Here's a guy yeah. just living high on the hog. Right. Oh, he thinks oh, yeah. he's the. Of course. And so you got a lot of that blowback. You were your own worst enemy on Twitter. Of course. And so, but subsequently, that that's no reason for your entire life to cave in on itself, especially when you're putting yourself in harm's way from the Russian mob to try to do something right for countless other people who were nailed by this group. And they thanked me, and they have a letter, the yeah. feds, of anyone that needs to see it. Uh, I remember a GMA called, and I said, thank God, after three years, I'm going to work. And they, then the big guy said, no, we can't hire you. Because you're poison. You, you're, you're, uh, you've got too many red flags. Yeah. Did you sue uh, anybody else besides Fox? I mean, bef uh, besides American Express? No, here's the deal. Here's what, it, here's what went down with Fox. Fox calls me and my agent at about 3.20 in the afternoon, said, here's the deal. We'll give you $380,000 or three seventy, whatever it was, to walk away. But you would need to sign for five years. You can't disparage this name, this name, this name, all, all the big bosses. Right, yeah. You can't. So I go, to, no way. I go to my agent. I'm not signing. I, let's, you know, there's a, I had a guaranteed contract and a couple, two and a half billion left on it. They, they should be paying me. Yeah. So uh, they said, oh, it's a moral clause. I said, <laughs> so what I, my agent said, you have to five o'clock to decide. If not, if you're going to sue, Fox got on. The, the legal. Yeah. You sue, we'll bleed you dry. Mm. You'll never work again a day in your life. Right. And that's, so that's what happened. So yeah. at 10 to 5, I said, okay. My agent said, you'll get another job. Take it. You'll be off for a year and we'll get you another job. That never happened. So um, you did take it? I no. took it. Uh, oh, I took the 380000 right. signed the five years, but I'm not allowed to say anything. Okay. Hey, I, I want to ask uh, what ended up happening to the, the criminals uh, oh. over all this. Okay, the girls that drugged me, they made a plea deal that they weren't going to be put away because they drugged me, and they'll leave that out, out of the case, right? But they have to be sh deported back to Estonia. Okay. Not to come back. So they were okay. deported. Yeah. The others got anywhere from... Five years up to 17 years. 17 years. So there's currently okay. someone, is there someone currently in jail serving time Well, for what this? they do is they send you out, the feds send you out a victim, victim crime and say, you know, we just want to make you aware of this. This is much right. time left and all that. Okay. So let's look at, look at the surface of this. The, these people, uh, the, it's, it's in the books. They, yeah. they were committing criminal activity. Yeah. Uh, they have been being held accountable for that. Um, FBI. John, uh, who has cooperated with the FBI, tells his story and ends up getting hosed out of, uh, you know, a career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's horrible just that imagine, it went down that way. Just imagine, you guys. Imagine this in the, in the prime of your career. You're not allowed to ever do this again. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You never allowed. You're done. Yeah. All and my life since did. I was a fifth grader. Yeah. That was my life. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one day, everything's taken away from you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, you were probably the most, at least one of the most recognizable meteorologists. Oh, in the 90s. Yes. Yeah. You, sure. You, I, I, yeah. you know, I could walk on water then, according to a couple of my news directors. <laughs> right. But, you know, that changes the time. No, you, you, were, you were combative. Yeah, but either way. Yeah. But yeah. I, mean, you, I marched to my own beat. That was yeah. it. So then there's, and <laughs> so I think. They, do, you, do you know during the case? Do you know during my case? I when, remember every name you threw at us. But the truth of the matter is, regardless of that, that doesn't set you apart from countless other people who might be need a lot of handling at work. That is no license to have your entire career eradicated. What, what I'm going to tell you one thing? They used for evidence. You know when I did the, I was the wrecking ball one time from one of the charity events? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It was they the used that as showing to the Fox presidents above. <gasps> Wait, Ro are Roger Ailes. Yeah. Look, they were doing the charity event. Oh this God. guy's <laughs> out of control. Yeah, yeah. We oh, can't oh, control oh, him. Oh, my God. He goes off on his own.
everything they could look. And you got to remember, the guy sitting in the in the thrones up there, like Roger Ailes, who yeah, eventually yeah. got fired because he used to take people in the closet and <laughs> yeah. get yeah, oral yeah, sex. Yeah. yeah. And they're righteous on me. And they're saying, this. it was a whole, you can't stop the avalanche. Yeah. And they were some mother effers mm. up there. Yeah. When you signed that, did you sign saying that you would, you can't sue them? Yeah, five years. I couldn't talk about it for five years. By the way, I want, I want to point something out. On, on the surface, I remember when all this was happening. It's, it's, and, and even now, if you're, if you're hearing some of the story, that it's pretty easy to sit back and go, well, I wouldn't have put myself in that position. I know. Yeah. I would not have, uh, I would, if these ladies came over and wanted to you know, sit down and have a conversation, I would have picked up on that right away. I think you're you exactly can't right. Possibly, no. You can't possibly say definitively what you would or would have not done no. in a situation like that. John is an adult. He's a single adult. He's on his own. He's on vacation. His plans all of a sudden change. He's by himself. These people approach him. He's got nobody to talk to. They're attractive ladies. They're hitting it off. It's going well. Well, let's hey, let's hang out for a bit. And then the crime happens. You get drugged. You get right. taken advantage of. It's, it's, it's because uh, I'm seeing some of the comments popping up, and mm -hmm. it's standard procedure that people are, it's very easy to sure. sit back and go, I, right. you're an idiot. You and I wouldn't have done that. Blah, 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 blah. You can't say that. Yeah. Well, and I was, look at, here, here's one of the one of the articles. Well, you did get good coverage on this. American one of, Reed did he, a, a right. Job. So mm -hmm. so so uh, one of the articles said this. John did not go looking for trouble. Trouble found him. Yeah. So in review of all the documentation, you were not you were not because you had this vision this this perception as a, a ladies man and a guy who would go out and. But that, of course, you can't yeah. be crucified. No. But that helped that. bury me. Yeah. But that helped bury me. Yeah, because of my reputation of, like, being a ladies' man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was part of it. That was a big, a big part. Listen, here, 2020 interview. Yeah, it's a really hot girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. 2020, the right? Day, by the way, John, I have to point out. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> my life wasn't so bad. All right. Yeah. So, All right. so Chris Cuomo on 20, interviewing me. Yeah. And uh, he brings up, listen, John. You're in a bar. You're acting like a big shot. You know, you're sitting there at the Oak Bar at, at the uh, Delano. I go, uh, I interrupted him. Yeah. I go, Chris, did you ever sit at the Oak Bar at the Delano? Yeah. yeah. He goes, yeah, plenty of times. Yeah. yeah. I don't he like the way he's framing this. He I'm goes, like, F you, what do you. What do you drink? Yeah. He goes, oh, sometimes uh, I, I drink uh, vodka. Sometimes I have wine. Let me ask you this. You're a big name. Dad, governor, yeah. right, all that. What about if someone did this to you? Yeah. How does it look on the surface? Not good for Chris Cuomo. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't. Right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to make it go away and say, oh, I'll just pay this stuff, and, and, you know, because my name, right? Yeah, yeah. Or do you fight it back? Or you fight back? And he goes, good response. Yeah. They cut that out of the interview. Of course. Uh, they did. Of course. Yeah. And I was saying earlier in the interview, because I, I have been slipped a, a roofie, and I wanted to mm -hmm. finish the thought here on this, because when it happened, it was like, uh, in the in the afternoon, and I was perfectly fine, and you know, having a great conversation. And then next thing I know, I'm literally in my bed at home, and I'm and I have no idea how I got there. I didn't see anybody put it into my drink. I I, I suspect that maybe they thought they were putting it into one of the girls' drinks that I was with or whatever. Huh. Um, yeah. it's it, a mind because, eraser. Yeah, because uh, I. By the way, I wasn't wearing thousand dollar sunglasses or a nice yeah. watch or whatever. I did have a nice Eddie Bauer sweater that I lost. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, but, they but took I'm it. just saying, like, um, people but, do that for kicks. But yeah. I woke up at, like. It was midnight. They probably knew it was Casey Boy. It, it, it was midnight, and also I had zero hangover. Like I felt when I woke up, I was like, oh. "Was that like with you? Did no. you did the you have zero morning, hangover?" Uh, the first time I was drugged, when I woke up in the morning, I, I felt not great, but not drunk, like not, you had, not like crazy, not right? like hungover, hungover, a little foggy, but not nothing yeah. bad. Okay. The second when I woke up, terrible. Okay. And oh wow. I got okay. No, 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 no. Would you, would you, we hold our hands up so we don't stand on you. We want finish your thought. Yeah. I called Marina. I said, you guys are no good. You did something. You're going to pay for it. This is one of the she, two women. She goes, oh, no, we're very, very nice people. I go, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. You're going to get a payback like you're not going to believe. And here's the deal. Before the FBI raided the whole gang, the whole Crew member because I worked with Lewis King, the undercover undercover yeah. guy who, by the way, said I have a pair of big kahunis for doing this. <laughs> I said, they called. I go, Alex, do me a favor. When you see Marina, tell her the weatherman said hello. <gasps> <gasps> and he did. Oh, oh boy. 
Nice. All right, so John, uh, looking back on this, and, and to Preston's point, like, I can understand how uh, that avalanche would happen, and uh, there was a lot that you could not have controlled in 2010. Right. Um, since then, uh, yeah. there are things that you could have controlled, right? Sure. And so looking back over the last decade and a half, because mm -hmm. it's been a long time, um, what do you own? What do you wish you had done differently? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like your approach to all of it, because uh, now it's all out in the open yeah. and we're, we're getting the facts, but what do you think you could have controlled differently? What, what, what I was terribly wrong with is... Uh, Playing myself as a victim. Yeah, okay. Right, being a victim party from, vic, you know, pity party for myself. I felt so despondent that I react emotionally because I always emotional. Guy. You're very, yeah, ever since we've known you. Whether I'm honestly, whether I'm having yeah. a drink or not having, I'm just me. I'm yeah. always emotional and passionate. That's how I became successful, but that also gets me in somewhat of trouble. When I look back, yeah, as my agent said to me way back then, John. Stay off of the tweeter, he called. Yeah. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, stay off we of the tweeter. We were telling you we that. Told you that. We told you that. Everyone's over that. Yourself, it's yeah. like this. <laughs> I get it, though. You're defending yourself. You know what? Because if you, like, I, I, I'm not listening. I'm, I'm very lucky in life. I'm fortunate in life what I have. But when you get attacked almost daily yeah. for years, and you know you're not a, a mean guy, or yeah. and you know what took place is not what they're saying it's not you know you you're you're i can't tell you how much hate mm. and you know after a while i don't care what you say that that breaks you down yeah, yeah. oh terribly i've had bad thoughts yeah mm. really have no at, at the lowest the lowest ebb i had is when i finally thought i got a good morning america yeah that day i was living in montauk i, I moved away to get away from yeah. everything you know i love montauk yeah baby. And uh, I'm driving down the LIE. I am so happy. I mean, I'm just like, I'm crying happy. Yeah. My agent calls me. Not going to happen. I go, oh. wow. <sighs> yeah, the, the, the big guy. Not Biden. But yeah. the big guy <laughs> said, um, it's not going to happen because of just too much red flags to HR. Mm. You're done. <sighs> I turned around. Went all the way back to Montauk. I walked along the beach. And I was going, I swear to you, I was going in my life. Yeah. I'm walking along the beach. I see a cross and I see a picture on it. It was a picture of a little girl. I go over, I look at it. It was her dad that drowned. He was a surfer. Mm -hmm. And I reminded myself, I have a daughter. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I have a daughter. I'm not going to do this. I was at the edge, my, right by the lighthouse, down all the cliffs. Yeah, all at the end. Yeah. And I said, okay. I went back. Oh I said, God. okay. And finally, my guy, Bert Brodsky, my business mentor, a friend of mine in New York, very, very hugely successful. I, I love the man like he's my father to this day. He said, come come to my house. You know, stayed on East End of Long Island. You, you know, they, by the way, they sit, uh, filmed the Wolf of Wall Street segment in his penthouse in New York. Okay. But anyway, he said to me, do me a favor. Get into real estate. Change your life. Rebuild yourself. What's wrong with you? What, what the hell's wrong with you? You're going to give up everything? And you have. And he said, I said, real estate? He goes, yeah. If you get into real estate, I'll give you my Gatsby on the Gra Gatsby in New York. That'll be your first listing. Oh, my gosh. Three days later, I enrolled in Temple and started my career in real estate. Yeah. Wow. I got my I got my license and... I see you doing well. You're, yeah, you're my handling first major client, celebrities and, and getting... Yeah. Them, I mean, yeah, yeah. big names. Yeah, I get a lot of big names. A lot of big names. The only I, one I really can talk about is Adam Sandler because he's, he doesn't give two hoots who, who, yeah. who mentions him, right? Mm -hmm. So Adam Sandler, when he comes to town, always take care of him, his real estate needs. And there's been others. Yeah. So are you happy now with where you are, mm -hmm. your real estate, and are you okay not being on TV? <laughs> you know, the way it ended, I hated I never got to say goodbye. And I, 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 I begged any network. Let's, yeah. Let me say one last time, do the weather and say goodbye. Yeah. Crickets. My agent called each station and said, listen, John will go on the air for nothing. You just pay him when it comes to numbers. Whatever the number is, this yeah. is what he gets paid. If he doesn't hit a number, he doesn't get paid. No. So when I look back, uh, yeah, of course I'd miss it. That was my... That was my blood. That was my lifeline. I buried my dad in a CBS TV t-shirt underneath his suit. You know, five years to the day he passed away, and I got my first position at CBS News at a very young age. You were always, you, you've you always been a always. complete weather geek. Yeah. geek. Mm -hmm. And you have always... And I can never get rid of that. And by the way, so people can follow you on 
Twitter. Twitter. All places. X. <laughs> we'll just say X now. Mm -hmm. uh, but your X. your weather reporting is terrific. Are you still looking over your shoulder these days? Uh, no. That's what I, I don't look over know. my shoulder. I didn't but, even look over my shoulder then until I got that one call. Mm -hmm. well, the, I don't. The, the, it was clearly Russian mob mobsters at your home, correct? Yeah, they got the other guy and they snapped his legs. <sighs> the other guy that was going to testify. That Ew. was actually part of the mob. Damn. But that, okay, so yeah, that's what I am worried about. You, you know, you're oblivious to that. Yeah. 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 You don't think that can happen to you. It's like a movie. Yeah. So you said you get notified when somebody gets let out? Yeah, they get, it's victim crimes. You know, they let you know, but, yeah. you know, just let them let you know. That. So is anyone out? Uh, I'm not allowed to discuss that. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. No, good. Well, right. Good. Protect yourself. Yeah. You're learning. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but if, I, yes, to answer your question, I, I miss it tremendously. I Thank God I reinvented myself in the real estate world. Yeah. You like real estate? Black Label. Okay. Yeah. Black yeah. Label. Yeah. Luxury, yeah, but is the real estate company. You got to remember, I was living on my friend's couch yeah. with nothing. I Until would, I got everything going again. I would suggest Good. if you had preconceived notions about John Belaris and about all that stuff that you heard back then, and we were reporting it on the show as well, mm -hmm. that it might be worth revisiting that and and uh, consider what you've heard here today. Yeah. And and it, John has been nothing but generous and kind to us all the years we've been on air. Mm -hmm. And you've always, at a time when you did need to step in and help this fledgling show, you <laughs> did. And and you did, and it was never lost on us. Listen, I'm I'm always loyal to the people that were loyal to me. You know, in this world, in our industry, uh, you know, once you go down, they flee like rats on a ship. <laughs> right. <laughs> No one's your it's friend. It's true. It's true. A couple of people remain your friend. Yeah. You, you know, you, it's funny when they reach out and you become successful again, how they start reaching out. But I remember the ones that always stand by my side. How's your daughter doing? Uh, she's having a tough time. She's 20 years old. Uh, she's living in the city. She's living on, on Chestnut Street. Uh, going through, you know, that tough age. Yeah, she was in yeah. San Francisco, Marin County during the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. Is her mom still out there? Her mom still lives out there. She did. She was living with me for a while, but... Dad and, and a teenage daughter. <laughs> Dad, a little, I, I little bit of conflict? No, no, I, yeah. I can't handle that. So she had some, th she's the best, most creative, loving girl in the world. But there's some confusion to it too, too, with these kids now. That's really tough and some, uh, you know, mental uh, there's, issues. There's and a lot of people eating. dealing with a lot of pain. A lot of pain, dude. Yeah. A lot of pain. You know, suicide. Yeah. Wit witnessing her friend commit suicide. Oh. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot out. I think people don't realize the shrapnel damage done to the kids nowadays from the pandemic. From the way, to find the, out. The way everything is out there in the world nowadays. Sure. Social media. Yeah, social media. I really, things, yeah. the, the pressure. I, Keep I, her, you of all people can tell her to stay on social media. Oh, she doesn't go on any of that. <laughs> she doesn't, that I, I remember. Yeah. I, no. You want to be a weather girl? God, never. <laughs> you know, nothing like that. She's very private. Yeah. Extreme. Doesn't even like her picture taken. Complete opposite well, of that. Fortunately, with with all the troubles there are now, there's more awareness and and uh, lack of uh, less shame about uh, coming yes. forward and asking for help uh, with with your issues and, and therapy and things like that. So, mm. you know, there's hope for Let people who are you, having trouble. So, I had so many reach outs to do movies and a bunch of stuff that we turned down. Yeah, like I looked at the one script. I'll show it to you. Movies so based on this story. Yeah, Lions Game. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't uh, want you to play. Yeah, uh, yeah, my agent said, "Don't do it." Neil Armstrong. Rights. Like, yeah, there's. A, I have the whole script of the, the Weatherman is the King, and there so, was like Robert Downey Jr. is going to play the Weatherman. Oh, oh he yeah. would have been a good one. Dude, Dude. 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 Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> why did? Why no? Why right, did? Well, my agent said did not give the permission. Said we're going to get you back on. Oh, okay. And they're going to take their liberties. And do you really want to relive that? Uh -oh. I go, well, maybe <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Hell yeah. Aren't you the one that told me to go to Philadelphia? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we, we, we got to wrap up, go unfortunately, ahead. John. But, but wait, um, he's got to give us a Cloudy forecast. today, temperatures around uh, 50, 50, in the low 50s. Tomorrow, some breaks with sunshine, a little bit milder nice. in the upper 50s. But rain comes back on Saturday, a dry Sunday 50. Is it gonna, right. But how windy is it going to be on Sunday? I need to know about the wind. Yeah, the winds pick up. All right. Bad? I don't know. I don't give you exact wind. All right. Okay. I have sorry. to look in. Long right, term, sorry. we're going to be in uh, <laughs> we're fine. spring training Forget next week. Oh, God. Right down yeah, in Clearwater. Uh, Thursday and Friday. I'll send you guys a forecast. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're not going to Miami. We're going. We're going to. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not going to Miami. Clear Screw that. I only go to Miami if Alex is being there. My FBI guy. <laughs> 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 Cover me, uh, John. It's great to catch oh, up with again, you. you guys. I love. Thank you so much for giving me some time. No one else does. Yeah. You give. You're always honest and real, mm -hmm. and this is why you're hugely successful. And you're funny as all hell. Oh, <laughs> thank it's, you, sir. It's information in the morning. It's entertainment. 
you have the secret sauce and you have the chemistry. Mm -hmm. I always admire that. Thank, Thank you. you, buddy. Thank we appreciate you. it. And we're happy that, that your life is where it's at. It's, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, it's fine. It's I have nice the, the best daughter so. in the world. I'm yeah. okay. I'm the documents have been unsealed now by yeah. John's yeah, case. Yeah, I'm allowed to talk about it. Okay. All right. So if you want, you'll, I'm sure I'll be posting more. <laughs> no. With, with reason. Don't. Don't. Like, you know, I'll call yeah. you for any edits. For <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Please. John Blair said. Yeah. Thank you for being here, John. It's great to see you. Good friend of ours. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. On 93.3 WMMR. 93.3 WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. One week from today, we are at the ballpark in <laughs> Clearwater, broadcasting live for spring training. So that's the Thursday morning live broadcast. We have a great time. We'll have players on. We'll get into the vibe. We'll go to the game afterwards. But we're doing... One more day, because normally we've done Fridays historically. Yeah, we've never had this sort of situation, and yeah. we're psyched. So the next day, we will leave the ballpark, and then we're headed, uh, we're sitting out at a bar, <laughs> having a good time. We are going to be at Coco's Crush Bar and Grill for a Friday morning live broadcast, and you... Philadelphia peoples uh, that will be in the area for spring training or whatever, even if you're a transplant and you're just, you, you want to come and join us that Friday morning. We're having a little uh, kind of early happy hour for lunch and <laughs> you can stop by uh, starting, I think at 9 a.m. as we're doing the live broadcast in the bar at Coco's Crush Bar and Grill. And we have the man who runs the place, who owns the place 30 years in the industry. He and his brother decided to open uh, Coco's Crush Bar and Grill and uh, he's from Philly. And, yes. And uh, Xfinity Live was his baby for a while. Please welcome Glenn Sud. Yeah. yeah. Good show. Good morning, hey, Glenn. How you doing, guys? Awesome, man. How you doing? Uh, feeling great, man. Good to be with you guys, to hear you. Yeah. Uh, brings back some great memories, man. <laughs> yeah, and we're excited to, you know, make some new memories at your new place. How long ago did you open up uh, Coco's, by the way? Uh, five years ago, July 1, 2000. 2019, uh, we turned five years old. It's been an incredible journey. It's 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 unbelievable, really, uh, what's been going on down here. So you must have said, okay, we're going to open up a business that is very people oriented. Make sure there's a worldwide pandemic, and then have the <laughs> President and Steve show yeah. up. <laughs> we opened up, and three months later, COVID hits, and they shut the doors. And I'm like, do I jump off the bridge now, or do I wait a little while? I'm not quite sure what to do here. No, it's but, a uh, it's a Herculean chore, and I mean to do. Listen, we certainly know so many restaurateurs and 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 people in the in the in the service industry or anything. Just in general. Just that it's difficult alone. So to have something that is is has caught fire the way your business has as uh, it's it's a just reward for that effort. Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, you saying that because we didn't know what to expect. But but uh, no offense to anybody, but thank God it's Florida and they kind of <laughs> let us do what we want. Uh, yeah, we were we're we're an outdoor tiki bar, so we were kind of able to still do our thing, and a lot of people kind of moved this way, and so. Uh, we took a bit of that mid Atlantic flavor and our orange in the orange crushes that you can get at every bar up there. Yeah. Nobody knew nobody knew that down here. That's what I was <laughs> so, gonna uh, ask because it's well known on the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Orange crush is what you have. And so it was an uh, you tapped into an unknown resource <laughs> in yeah, the absolutely. area. And that's, absolutely, my friend. <laughs> and that's helped make you guys the number one bar on Clearwater Beach, right? Yeah, yeah, we we uh, we were voted uh, number one on Clearwater Beach, wow. and uh, we sell, we uh, well, I buy more oranges than anyone in Pinellas County. <laughs> oh so we do a lot of orange crushes. <laughs> no, no doubt. That's Good awesome. for you, man. That's yeah. awesome. So, uh, Glenn, yeah. the first year I went to spring training was uh, 2008, and it was revelatory for me. I was so excited. I went out with my brother and had a great time. And then uh, Kathy and I went with a, a few friends. Uh, about a decade ago, and we went to what your bar is now. Back then, it was called Cooters. Uh, how many different um, Cocos are there? And uh, just so our listeners know, and anybody who's in Florida listening now, uh, which Cocos are we actually going to be broadcasting from uh, when we're there next week, next Friday? Yeah, yeah, that's great. So we started five years ago. We called that the OG, the original. That's down the street on Coronado Drive. It's a, in within walking distance. And then, yes, a couple years back, uh, we bought Cooters. And we turned that into Coco's Crush Bar at North Beach location. So we kind of have Clearwater Beach uh, surrounded. There's a roundabout, which kind of you bring in so we can go to the right or to the left. We are going to happily broadcast with you guys at our North Beach location okay. uh, just because we can fit more people there. 
and throw, quite frankly, a bigger party. And then we just recently, six months ago, opened up our third uh, our third location, which is in Indian Rocks Beach. That's about eight miles down the road. Um, you will be surprised how many Philly fans are in this area. It is unbelievable. Let me jump right in here and tell you that years ago, I was I was reticent to do the um, the spring training thing because my perception was is that you no, know, you had some locals that had moved down there, and that it was this kind of thing. That is, if you're a real hardcore baseball fan, it was of interest. I had no idea mm. the the shift, the migration that takes place. The Clearwater becomes mini Philadelphia. And, and it, Philadelphia, it is it. just amazing. The vibe is so good. Casually walking around the stadium down there, I encountered people from my block, my uh, my sprinkler guy, electrician. Former it, co-workers. Former co <laughs> it is such a great vibe. Uh -huh. It's unbelievable. There will not be a day that doesn't go by that I get a text or something. Hey, which bar are you located in? <laughs> We're stopping in. Uh, it's just that Middletown, Delaware. I lived in Delaware for, for many years. I lived in Philly for many years, of course. And uh, it, it's just unbelievable that uh, how Philly takes over this town and transforms it. And I got to tell you, uh, to see everybody out at that stadium and the support, it is so much fun. And then, boom, yeah. they come. As soon as the game's over, they come right back to the beach. And uh, we kind of hang out and party all night long. And I got to tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no. And now, listen, I have to say, you know, Glenn, you're talking about sending us to the bigger bar so we can have a bigger party. We've, we've never done this before. <laughs> we've never gone to another state, another country. I mean, we've done those things, but we've never said, hey, by the way, if you're there, come on out. We're going to have a party. So I don't know what the turnout's going to be. This is the first, <laughs> this is uncharted territory. So I have no idea what the turnout's going to be like. I'm on Zoom, right? I'm on camera. Yeah, 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 we can see you. You're yeah. good. All right, so so maybe maybe we give him a shout of that. Oh, <laughs> look at that. He's right on the beach. Uh, Dude, that's awesome. I, I'm from my, I, I'm, we're taking this from my balcony. I'm just having coffee this morning. Yeah, so. oh, phenomenal. <laughs> if, you, if you can see the city in the background. Yeah. 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 Looks no, it's amazing. gorgeous. I mean, that's where we're going to be. We're going to look at manatees and dolphins while you guys are down here and uh if that if that doesn't put people on uh to philly sports trip.com to go uh jump on this uh trip i don't know what would right? well yeah so i'm glad you brought that up glenn I, and i want to make sure we give the right address so coco's crush bar north uh it's uh 423 poinsettia avenue in clearwater yep. beach 423 poinsettia avenue and that's where we're going to be next friday morning uh but um it's great that we've been able to team up and you've been able to team up with uh, Philly sports trips. Vince is just a great guy, and they're bringing at least two plane fulls of people down. So we're going to be flying with a bunch of people uh, next Wednesday uh, from Philly down to, to Tampa, and then I believe on Thursday another plane's coming down, and all of those people are invited to Coco's Crush Bar on Friday morning. Absolutely. Hey, Vinny's a great guy, man. And, uh, I, you know, I met him through Xfinity Live and, and, and – uh, my past from up there, which uh, uh, which is doing great, and I'm so happy for them. Uh, but Vinny's a great guy. Uh, the party that we threw last year, and now to have you guys a part of it, I got to tell you, uh, jumping the gun here a little bit, but I kind of think some tradition might be working. Here <laughs> right. It doesn't you sound like anything that. we're going to oppose. I yeah, don't absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be an arm twister for you guys, I'm mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> so, any any uh, memories from your your time with uh, you know here in Xfinity and and uh, I mean was it was a good prep work? I mean, obviously you you were able to bring down a drink that has become your foundational uh, drink there. But but I mean, what what uh, anything any uh, memories of your time here that just really stick with you every day that you think about? Uh, you know, there's. I, my experience up there was unbelievable. Uh, I like to tell everybody I got a million dollar education from everybody up there. Uh, the experience that Xfinity Live was for the city of Philadelphia. I mean, eight million people walked across that footprint. And when we built that place, we really didn't have a playbook. Right. So I was uh, super excited to be a part of that playbook. And hey, we wrote some good plays. They've turned out pretty well. And then, hey, we dropped back and punted on a couple of things and, and did a few things differently. But it's become a mainstay up there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. iconic now. Yeah. We kind of changed the way sports tailgating took place mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was proud to be a part of all that. Uh, it's the, it was the greatest experience ever. Uh, to rip the Band-Aid off, take the leap to come to Florida and say, hey, can I do this on my own, was uh, a challenge. 
And I guess uh, three bars and five years later, I guess we're doing okay. You're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you got the recipe for success. We'll try not to screw it up for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, how many, how many different types of crushes do you guys uh, make at Coco's? Uh, we have 12 different crushes right now. Every single one of them we use fresh uh, produce in and squeeze down every single day. We don't store and pour anything. We made over 100,000 orange crushes at just the original location last year. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, Kathy, uh, I see a flight of 12 in your future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey, hey, Kathy, if you drink all 12, we actually give you a free T-shirt. <laughs> 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 you, 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 may, you may need to offer a dress. <laughs> uh, excellent. We'll give, we'll give you an Uber ride or a free walk back to your hotel. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, all right, Glenn, we're going to have plenty of time to chat when we get there next Friday, so we're stoked. Thanks for jumping on this morning, and thanks to Philly Sports Trips putting this together, uh, but we're looking forward to uh, the first annual yes. Yes. live broadcast. Yes. Yeah, I like it. I like that. Good. And Glenn, we're, we're kicking like off the weekend. Time. I mean, we're starting, yeah. you know, that morning we're doing our show, and then the party just continues the rest of the day on Friday, and then, and then it's St. Patrick's Day weekend on top of all of it. it you know, I... It's a great way to kick this thing off because this week, that weekend is unbelievable. Up at the stadium with the Phillies, it's it's crazy. We have two locations inside Philly Stadium for uh, spring training as well. So you can stop in and see us at Coco's inside Philly Stadium. We'll get you warmed up with some orange crushes there. <laughs> then come on back. We're doing live bands. Uh, as soon as you guys are done broadcasting, we're doing live bands, oysters, crab cakes, the whole nine yards. We got the whole mid-Atlantic vibe for you guys. And uh, really can't wait for you guys to come on down and, and uh, have some fun with us. Very excited. It's going to be a good time. Awesome. All right. We will see you next Friday, Glenn. Thank you so much. Glenn Sutton. Yeah. Yeah. Coco's Crush Bar and Grill in Clearwater Beach. I'm, we'll be at the North location. I'm very excited right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got way more excited. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> talking to him, man. Yeah. Um, I had a, a couple of stories that kind of semi-tie into this. Um, did you see that uh, now we're not quite to spring break. I guess we will be the uh, flirt we're flirting with spring break now, yeah, right? My, yeah. uh, no, actually because I, I saw my friend's uh, son at the gym yesterday and he's in college at Loyola. Okay. So he's home this week. Uh, next week I know some high schools are on spring break. Um, so the reason I bring that up is uh, Miami Beach has uh, broken up with spring break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've released a new uh, ad, uh, a city ad and the video says it's not us, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this funny. is after three years of celebrations that uh, descend into violence and chaos. And then that's what was happening. I mean, you you know. I mean, that that, that was the, the, one of the Mecca spots. People yeah. would head down there. Yeah. And they they just said, listen, we, we're going to have to favor the people who are residents all year round right. and not let it become abject pandemonium. Yeah, and remember, that's what it was. I remember being in uh, you know late high school, early college, and MTV Spring Break was always <laughs> a big thing. Panama city was the thing and i listen i went to a spring break uh, we went to key west but it was not that i mean no. it was it was a you know not tame by any stretch but it was definitely not what no we M saw on mtv TV did their version of it and i was it, that surfaced right about the time i was of age to to go down there and we saw that stuff on tv and we're like oh my yeah. god oh yeah. yeah this is the well, greatest thing i've ever seen because it was, they got the hottest people in the world. They put them Absolutely. on camera. They had them in big crowds. All these, you know, really hot girls on top of the good looking guy's shoulders, yeah. screaming and yelling, throwing stuff around. They had celebs galore, uh -huh. live music, all this stuff. And you're like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Like, I remember, like, Steve, we get butterflies just at the idea of maybe being able to go and be a part of something like you, that. You, you it, you, it's like at the, it's like watching the end of 2001. You can't believe what you're seeing, yeah. and to know that it's really just a short trip to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's really what made uh, Adam Sandler popular. It made Pauly Shore popular, yeah. and like so, you see these Colin Quinn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Colin Quinn, yeah. yeah, the whole nine, and uh, uh, Eric Nees, and yeah. like all these MTV wow. dudes. Yeah. Um, but uh, Casey, when we went to Key West, you ha first of all, you had to be 21. You know, a lot of people did spring break in uh, in Mexico and the Caymans and, and Bermuda because you could get away with drinking in places where you weren't 21. But if you were to go to Florida, you had to be 21. And I think that kind of um, weeded out some of the idiots a little bit. Well, I was, one, I, was one of the, I was one of the idiots that was not weeded out. I've told you before, my my parents, they let me go. I was a junior in high school. Which blows my mind. Went to Daytona Beach, Florida with a bunch of guys. 
guys, I can't believe they let me do that. And we were, dude, we were doing everything from just, I mean, drinking constantly to, and I can't, this is sharing a little bit about my life. This is a junior in high school. Like, dude, crushing up speed and smoking it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I like, mean, that's oh, insane. Dude, just stupid. That's we my just, son. My son is 16 years old. I, I could uh, never in a million years imagine sending him was, off. In hindsight, it was yeah. one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. And got, you know, as you can imagine, I got so wasted. I was sick for days. And it was just terrible. Did you get sun poisoning, too? No, that wasn't at that. But, okay. uh, but... But what I didn't get was laid, which was the <laughs> only reason I really went, wanted to even, go. Even the nerds got laid. <laughs> Junior. Oh, Preston, Christ we did sake. the same thing, except we didn't even tell our parents. We booked a trip in high school, wow. a spring break trip to Cancun, and we came home. We were like, what? oh, by the way, we're going to Cancun. And our parents were like, wait, what? And we're like, yeah, we already paid. We, we went with cash to the travel agent wow. and paid. And they let you. And and we went and, you know, we got strict instructions. But you there know, are bugs never, and vending machines. You know, never leave each other. You should, it was four of us. Stay together. Never, you know, never be apart. No, never go anywhere alone. The first night we were there, <laughs> all four of us ended up at home by, our, like ended up going home by ourselves. Like we, we lost each other. Yeah. It was. Oh, wow. And, yeah. and then we also did the, the over 21 spring break. We went to, um, oh, South Padre, right? That was big that was at huge. the time. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not funny, but like I could have been, or all of us could have been Natalie Holloway. Like that's what yeah. I think of. We and, ended and, up in yeah. in a local, the backseat of a local's car and yeah. they were smoking something in the car and it just was like, and, and then when her story came out years later, I'm like, that was us. Oh, like yeah. that could have happened to any one of us. Well, we did. Um, it wasn't spring break. It was. Uh, it was senior week. And, and, I, and again, I was only seventeen years old. Most senior weekers, uh, they'll go down to the shore. We went to Cancun. We had a friend's mom who was a travel agent, so we ended up going going to Cancun. Like, dude, I I was. I, I mean, I wouldn't even go like today as a you know as an adult. No, I I, I would, but like it's seventeen Caligula -esque. years old. Esque. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, like Preston, I didn't. I didn't get any of that. Uh, yeah. Well, I was down, yeah, I remember. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I was down there for the furry convention. Oh, and oh I, yeah. You know, no, so oh, as a non-drinker, it was really never a thing. Oh, it would have been annoying. Uh, it would have been annoying, you. yeah. But it was still amazing. <laughs> you compare what the MTV, the, yeah. the, the Nirvana perception of what it was like, to what it's become in Miami with the street racing yeah. and all that crap, and, yeah. and it's 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 not the same thing. It's not Eric Nice yeah. walking around. It's a wholly different thing. Yeah, Miami was never a, uh, a destination for me. Uh, driving through there to get to Key West was, you know, the yeah, it wasn't yeah. a big spring break. It wasn't one of the hot spots. You had, you know, Lauderdale, Daytona, Padre. Those were the main, you know. Uh, Highly uh, publicized. Yeah, spring break is here. You the places you looked for. This is where you go. But uh, and I never considered going to Mexico. That's uh, yeah. Yeah, Cancun was uh, our spot sophomore yeah. year because we were nineteen and could get away with it then. Yeah, uh, and it was insane. We did yeah. you know Laboom and uh, oh my god, yes. uh, Carlos and yes. Charlie's. And our hotel was Papa right Zemir. next to Laboom. Okay, what was, was the, what was the frogs one? Uh, uh, senior, senior, senior frogs. frogs. Senior, I had that, frogs. Yeah. senior frogs. All three of those T-shirts. I went to the uh, yeah. the foam party at Laboom. Yep. You can't breathe in those things. <laughs> I know. I went to a couple of places like that in Mexico. Papa's and beer and uh -huh. rock and roll rock and roll taco. I think was another one. Okay. But it, same exact meat market vibe. And, oh and here's God. how I feel now. <laughs> I was so lame. I am 100 uh, on the side of Miami Beach and not the Spring Breakers. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's a quiet. I'm like I a quiet community. And let's uh, can we uh, calm it down? <laughs> A little bit. Nick, how is their public library? <laughs> like, I don't even like my gym during spring break. I know, right? You know, like get I'm, out. I'm like, oh, it's spring break. All the college kids are here. Mm. Like, <laughs> By the way, if you have the spring break travel plans, here are the airports to avoid. Uh, it was analyzed. They analyzed uh, flight departure information during 2023 during the spring break. Uh, and they found that 39.5% uh, of flights out of Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, International were canceled or delayed. Oh, wow. Vegas came in second place. Maybe that's a, a destination. So they for they, they go they they a lot of the house remember so there was uh, the houseboat renting yeah is huge. Oh, okay. Lake Mead. Lake, yeah, Lake Mead. Mead. Yeah. And in fact, I think MTV one year ported the celebration to that. Oh, you know really? what? A, yeah. a lot of people in uh, California and Southwest they go to Lake Havasu, and that's Lake Havasu. Yeah, yeah, that's a spring uh, location. That's like in between Vegas, Phoenix, and L.A. 
And um, I had friends that went to Arizona State, Northern Arizona, and USC, and they all went to Havasu. Okay. What about Palm Springs? Uh, it doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, it doesn't say anything about the airport there. Orlando <laughs> International Airport came in third. Wait, with where? thirty-two point six. Orlando. Orlando. <laughs> I love you. I don't know how. I don't know how close. Orlando. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> come on. One more time. Um, I don't know how close or if Orlando is the major airport for those uh, East Coast uh, Not really. beach no. destinations. No, it's no. more central, right? More central. Like Lauderdale or, um, I mean, like Tallahassee. If you're you're going thinking to, uh, of uh, Hulk Hogan International. Oh. <laughs> no, if you go to Tallahassee, you can get to um, the, any of the Panhandle beach locations. I fly which, out of Iron Sheik. If you go to the Panhandle, uh, even this time of year, it can be cold. Yeah, like, you can, yeah you're right. It's so far north uh, and like Jacksonville, it's not warm yet. You yeah. know? yeah, we were in I went. I'm sorry to interrupt, Casey. Yeah, we right. did Pensacola and... and uh, 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 Destin in like February, yeah. and we're it was not the normal Florida no, temperatures right. at all. The, mo the morning of our first time down doing the broadcast from the from we the were training, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. like in sh well, listen, I'm wearing shorts now, but we were freezing. It was like 45 degrees. We travel with co I do with coats yeah. just in case. <laughs> yeah. Now, when yeah. I did that Van Wilder. Um, the press junket, that's what those things are called. Uh, that was in Panama City in the Panhandle right around this time of year. I thought it was going to be bumping. It was cold. It was <laughs> foggy. Yeah. You couldn't see anything. It, yeah, I was like, okay, this place sucks. But wow. I was so excited because... Uh, you know, I was a little bit uh, younger, yeah. and and that's where MTV went. I was like, this place is going to be bumping. Yeah, it's yeah. bumping. Yeah, do check the forecast uh, before you go. Marissa got her tongue pierced in Daytona. Oh, she did <laughs> in Daytona. I did not know that that's where that had happened on a whim, or had you had plans to do it? Yeah, because we were so dumb, being freshmen and going to Florida and thinking that we were going to have fun. We were eighteen. One person had a fake ID. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had the over under bars, but like you know. You think that you could get around. They're like, no, you guys stay over there. It's there. funny, though. Nobody's uh, getting close. Try as you might, Marissa, or you guys all with, with kids. Um, you know, when you were back then, you would never comprehend it. It's like, why can't you see? Why can't you oh, understand? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're on the other side of the uh, the fence, and it's like, <laughs> but I've seen, and I understand. I understand, yeah. yeah. Marissa, did you try to hide your, your piercing when you got home, or did your parents know right away? Uh, I'm going up to my room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, what? 100%. <laughs> I um, got off the plane. We were on the plane, and everyone was getting food, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't. Eat anything. I was like, <laughs> somebody grab me some fries from oh McDonald's because I could like slide them in. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then the we had salt. Easter dinner and we were sitting around the table no. and I thought nobody had noticed. <laughs> and um, at some point we were laughing hysterically. And you're and my wide mouth, mouth laugh. Wide. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and everyone's laughing. And then somebody, I think. My mom stopped and was like, what's that? And then the entire table cracks up laughing. And they're like, you didn't notice the entire time that she's been lisping? And she's like, all right, well, at least at least I knew about the other one. And then the whole table laughs. And my dad stops and he goes, well, what other oh, one? No. <laughs> well, well nice. if we're refreshing up, I've got a Prince Albert. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? Well, anyhow, uh, yeah, keep in mind, Miami trying to put the, uh, uh, you know, the the kibosh on the big, big out-of-hand celebrations. Uh, but if you are headed to a uh, one of the popular destinations, probably going to hit some travel snafus. Don't go the to the uh, Fountain Blue and yes, engage with any as we learned yeah. Yeah. from John Bolaris. Be careful. All right, we should take a break. There's some bizarre file stories we want to share with you, and we will get to those when we return. So stay with us. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. All right, it's brought to you by Monster Mania 58 this weekend in Cherry Hill with Sam Raimi, Katie Seagal, John Cleese, wow. and more. Yeah, tickets are on sale now at monstermania.net. We will begin this particular bizarre file with this really weird story. Six people were arrested Tuesday in connection with a scheme to smuggle thousands of pounds of raw goose and duck intestines from China through Los Angeles and ultimately New York City for sale to restaurants and consumers. Uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. Was that turned into like pate or what is that? 
It's a good question. What the I don't hell know you what do with that? I don't know what their intestines I, would be used for. Novelty I mean, usually items? Usually, pate is made of liver. Oh, so I, know. I don't know what they would do. What? Uh, the, the can. You open it up and the goose intestines pop out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the old novelty. It's a novelty item. Yeah. Uh, so they're charged with importing and selling uh, illegal merchandise from China. Shipments of the illegal products were falsely labeled. Uh, federal law prohibits the importation of raw gro- goose and duck intestines from China and duck blood products. From any unapproved establishments yeah. in China. Always look at the label on your duck blood. Uh, investigators said that they observed 79 cartons containing approximately 1,800 pounds of illegal goose intestines and 960 pounds of illegal duck intestines. So I was drinking uh, duck blood the other day, and I noticed that the sell-by date had expired by oh. a month. No. Oh. In another shipment, the illegal products were concealed under packaged rattlesnakes. Uh, <laughs> Boy, this is not rattlesnake meat. This is duck's blood. <laughs> uh, investigators <laughs> believe that there are additional so stupid. shipments of illegal products that have gone undiscovered. The amount of crap they must see. Uh, a Royal Caribbean cruise employee has been arrested after allegedly setting up hidden cameras inside passengers' bathrooms to spy on young girls. Arvin Joseph Marisol was arrested Sunday after guests boarded the Symphony of the Seas cruise ship and found a camera in her bathroom. Uh, The guest who was staying in a room with her sister and mother found the hidden camera when she reached under the sink to grab a roll of toilet paper and found the camera affixed to the counter underneath the sink. So, you know, John Heffron has that device that'll let you know if there are cameras in the room. Might be worth picking up on if you're going on a cruise. Kathy, by the way, when you are checking for bed bugs and things like that, do you ever (laughs) take a quick peek for hidden and cameras? Um, no, but I will look like for the mirror, like the, the double sided mirror, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then also the peephole for the um Door. you know to look out to make sure it's pointed in the right direction. Okay. All right. Uh so what about the glory holes, will you tape them up? I did yeah. I, yes, I will tape that up. And I did send you guys your reminders when we checked in I saw uh, that. at the cardboard classic. Yeah. It's okay that none of you responded. Uh, <laughs> I was said, busy check, checking. Check, check oh, okay. for bed bugs. All right. All right. Uh, Marisol, an attendant who services the cabin by cleaning, replacing towels, and making the bed, was detained on the ship until it docked. Uh, and on the USB stick that they found, uh, they discovered numerous videos of naked females undressing as well as child pornography. Oh, my God. One video showed uh, the guy, and this is what these guys always make the mistake of doing, thank goodness, is there was a video of himself installing the camera into what? the guest bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, they usually, for some reason, have it on. And Look they what can, I'm doing. They can bust them, which is uh, a hey good, guys. Thing, good thing that happens. A principal in Japan has been fired and will lose his pension for stealing 50 cents worth of coffee. What? The 59-year-old was using a self-service coffee maker and poured himself a large... Uh, wa- large coffee while only paying for the regular size. And he lost his pension for that? Yeah, regular coffee sell for 73 cents while the large is $1.20. The store did not press charges, but when the uh, Hyogo Prefectural Board of Education asked about the incident, the principal admitted to using the larger cup on several occasions. He was fired for, quote, gross misconduct unbecoming of an educational public servant. Oh, they, they don't know what gross misconduct is. A commenter said he's an older guy. He probably could have could have uh, gotten away with saying that he didn't know how to use the machine, but his pension would have been worth about $133,000. I have to believe the guy is going to appeal this Absolutely. whole thing. Absolutely. Uh, but we will see. All right, so the prostitutes in Bangkok got into an all-out brawl in the red light district over the reported turf war uh, that roped cops into the melee. Uh, Video captures some of the highlights where a handful of sex workers uh, from the Philippines were reported to have been using a popular hotel, and apparently other prostitutes felt protective of their territory. That's when the whores come in. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I I was watching footage of this. It was a full-out hooker melee. Yeah, officers were called over a dispute between some of the Filipino sex workers reportedly accused of stealing customers from a Thai prostitute in the area. And as the cops escorted them out of the building and into the street, there was a huge crowd waiting for them, and that's when the big brouhaha started with prostitutes and cops clashing Fists being thrown. And they'll be tie tie. And it looks like something out of a movie scene that was uh, absolutely chaotic. In the end, the officers were able to bring the sex workers that they were originally there for to the police station. But it looks like they were all fairly roughed up as they went inside. Can't we get along? Uh, they were reportedly arrested for working in the area without proper paperwork. So they uh, got busted for that. Was that a band name, uh, Hooker Melee? 
Oh. Did you toss out Steve? It should be a good one. Hooker oh. Melee. Hooker nice. Melee is a great... It, it might be more of an album term. Okay. Or an album. I don't know. Either one. Or an ointment. So, two teens in California broke into an unfinished billion-dollar NBA arena in the middle of the night, even shooting some hoops for the world, and outraged local officials to see on social media. The juvenile seemed, uh, seemingly entered the uh, Intuit Dome, the future home of the Clippers in Inglewood, California, when they climbed an orange work ladder outside of the construction grounds. The over 90 second TikTok video posted Thursday showed the whole thing. The brazen duo recorded themselves strolling around the empty stadium's hallways and bleachers and shooting basketballs on an uncompleted court. The video shows that one suspect who wore a Lakers uh, <laughs> pair of pajama pants and Crocs used work buckets to try a slam dunk before he sprayed a fire extinguisher at the hoop. Uh, they were then seen climbing onto the bridge in the rafters before making their way onto the roof. From there, they posted, they posed for the camera again, showing their faces and took panoramic shots of the city skyline before the video ended. And doubling down on their activities, they even captioned the video, Breaking into Clippers Stadium. And they hashtagged the Clippers, the Lakers, and LeBron James of on the course. video. Yeah, they're very and smart. Posted it. Thank God they're, these guys are so narcissistic. Yeah. By the way, Inglewood Mayor James E. Butts has been uh, has since identified the pair and their parents as well. Um, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Butts. Butts. <laughs> no, I'm wearing well. Jimmy, his, uh, his wife is with my finger do. Jimmy Bud said that it will be uh, very clear to these young men and the people who are TikTok followers that uh, you have a moment of TikTok greatness followed by a little bit of misery, and so we don't play around with these things. And Jim why? <laughs> Bud said security will be bumped up at the privately funded arena as the city is fully aware of the careless criminal behavior flaunted across social media. You know what, Bud's coming after you. Yep. And that is the last story I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back in a moment. A reminder, we have a little thing in the studio. It's on the, the YouTube uh, feed. If you would like to see what's behind me now, you could possibly enter to win some movie passes. So I suggest you take a peek right now. We're going to break and come back in just a second. Lesson, question, trash, and music news are on the way next. And hand in WMMR. Everything that rocks. It's uh, six minutes after 10. We are the Preston and Steve Show. Uh, don't forget, tickets for MMR, but you go on sale tomorrow morning. I can't believe it. We just announced it, and then they go on sale right after we announce it. So don't miss out on that. I'll give you a, the full rundown, the details, all that stuff when we get to uh, Music News, which is coming up here in just a moment. But uh, for now, we're going to give something away. We have the lesson question, and we are going to give away tickets to see Marlon Wayans, guest we had on uh, earlier this week at the Event Center, Live Casino and Hotel, mm -hmm. and it's 21 and over event. And the question we'll ask for you this morning, what dessert can pet groomers make out of discarded pet hair? 215-263-WMMR. What dessert can pet groomers make out of discarded pet hair? 215-263-WMMR. If you happen to know, you heard that, give us a call now, and we'll get you a prize. Here we go. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you this morning by Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. Live Casino presents comedian Marlon Wayans, of course. March 8th. Tickets are on sale at livecasinophilly.com. By the way, March 8th is tomorrow. Uh, what's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Pamela Anderson says she has no interest in being part of the Plan Baywatch TV series reboot. Anderson says her schedule is way too busy with not wearing makeup. Oh, oh my God. Madonna's daughter, Lourdes Leone, stirring up Fashion Week by appearing in public wearing a completely see-through blouse with no bra. Lourdes told reporters she was delivering on a promise to show the Eiffel Tower to her nipples. <laughs> and finally, Carrie Elway is calling police to his Malibu estate after crafty thieves broke in and pilfered art, jewelry, and cash. Elway says because he has a high-tech security system, he believes it might have been R-O-U-S's or robbers of unusual skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. All right, let's see if you happen to know what dessert uh, pet groomers can make out of discarded pet hair. 215-263-WMMR. And we're going to go to Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Aaron, what uh, dessert can pet groomers make out of discarded pet hair? Cotton candy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
And we're going to give you, I didn't even know we had that. Yeah. We're going to give you a pair of tickets to see Marlon Wayans tomorrow at the Event Center, Live Casino in Hotel Philadelphia. 21 and over event. Tickets are on sale now via livecasinophilly.com. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! All right. Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn's uh, been... Come to know this. <laughs> I'm going to fix this. All right. It says Natural Lawns has been creating. Let's lose the S. And there we go. Was so there an apostrophe in there? There was. All right. Well, I mean, they, they, it's fine without an apostrophe. They have been creating these things. Exactly. We could either get rid of the has or get rid of the, the apostrophe. Come on. Yes, so I'm going to the apostrophe S. Uh, <laughs> natural, <laughs> natural Lawn of America. Some or, of the best gorilla I've ever eaten. Or just Calper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, sums it up. Uh, natural Lawn of America. Uh, natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. You can get free seeding every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. Out tomorrow is Invincible Shield, the 19th studio album by Judas Priest. The 11-song set was produced by Andy Sneap, the band's touring guitarist Sneep. who fills in for Glenn Tipton, who's been sidelined by Parkinson's disease mm. back in the UK. Tipton <clears throat> uh, played on the album and co-wrote songs, however, uh, with frontman Rob Halford and guitarist Richie Faulkner. Invincible Shield is also coming out 50 years after Judas Priest's first album, Rock and Roll. years. That's crazy. Nin Talk about staying power. Yeah, 1974 is when that came out. Uh, Judas Priest recently kicks off, or yeah, recently kicks off a European tour. To support the album on March 11th. Recently kicks off, and it's not till March 11th. <laughs> well, <laughs> is it with an apostrophe? Kicks you know, off? I glance at a lot of these things because yeah. we do this before the show and to get my stuff it. ready, and and then yeah. I agree. All right, anyway. Well, it's news to you then, too. Judas Priest will kick off at a European tour to support the album. <laughs> Has already kicked off next week. March 11th in Glasgow, Scotland. May, yeah. Maybe we're not supposed to read it until next week. <laughs> Maybe you can, you can Do see Do not them. read till next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in and I'm busting to tell you about it, but it says at the top, don't read till next week. <laughs> I have a story so big it's going to make your toes, girl, but I can't read it. <laughs> we'll get to that next week. Next week. <laughs> In the meantime, it's confirmed Poison will tour next year. Frontman Brett Michaels. Or last year. Uh, told fans <laughs> during a Q&A session at the Rock Legends Cruise that the band will be regrouping for a stadium and arena tour. Uh, he talked about the balance between his solo career and with Poison. He said, for me... What it is, we do a couple of years of solo, and then we'll go out and we'll do 35, 40 dates uh, with Poison, and we set it up and we schedule it. Uh, he said that uh, C.C. DeVille, Bobby Dahl, Ricky Rocket are all on board. Uh, the band recently took on a successful stadium tour with Motley Crue and Def Leppard, of course. Are there any indications? Because that, like those triple bills, you know, they they sell really well, and I love like the concept of that many bands on one of these stadium tours. Any indications to the other bands might no, be? No, they're just, yeah, if he's saying stadium, it, it says stadium and arena, so it's not going to be mm -hmm. just Poison, right. but he hasn't indicated who as of yet. So. He's got his party girl thing going yeah, on. That's, right? Yeah, that's. I, I bet you the focus is more on that, and there's some, some good acts on that with him. He's such a a nice guy. He's, he's tremendous. Nice really guy. like Brett Michaels. And he's really yeah. smart. Yeah. And he's handsome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> Uh, Billy Idol will celebrate the 40th anniversary of his album, Rebel Yell. That's 40 years old. 40 years. Uh, by releasing a deluxe expanded edition. She uh, cried, why, why, why? The album produced hits like Eyes Without a Face, Flesh for Fantasy, Rebel Yell, and Catch My Fall. Man, he sounded good at the barbecue. He did. And, and Flesh for Fantasy was a song I have forgotten about. Yeah. And he played it, and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> it was excellent. Uh, the reissue includes previously unreleased songs and demos and the poolside remix of Eyes Without a Face. Also included is a never-before-released Billy Idol Steve Stevens song called Best Way Out of Here from the, the original The session. poolside mix of Eyes Without a Face. 
Yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm sitting by the pool. Uh, Rebel Yell originally came out November 1983 as and is a double platinum album. The deluxe version will be released on April 26. Uh, this is really cool. Michael McDonald will be a part of the next Doobie Brothers album, which the band is very close to finishing up for release later this year, according to a social media post by the band's Patrick Simmons. Uh, it will be McDonald's first as a band member since One Step Closer in 1980. So I just watched a uh, like about a two-hour interview with him. You know, uh, Rick Beto. Yeah. yeah. And did you watch it? I saw portions of oh, it. Oh, it's, it's so good. He's he's brilliant. He's, yeah. he's, he's one of the greatest musicians. Uh, although he did sing background vocals on the Doobies 2014 album Southbound. Uh, in the post, Simmons confirmed that uh, Liberté producer John Shanks is also on board for the project and that he, McDonald, co-founder Tom Johnston, and John McAfee have composed a great bunch of songs they said that we're really proud of. And in my humble opinion, it's turning out to be some of the best music we've ever made together. Uh, you know, they, they did a comeback thing. And, yeah, uh, you yeah. Remember they had that song, You Gotta Listen to the Doctor. Yeah. And I was like, this still sounds great. Yeah, it does. This is still good Doobie Brothers stuff, Just, man. I mean, it, it, it got some traction. Yeah, it was but a the, huge, it, huge hit. Yeah, but. they're not going to have a number one hit again. But, but I mean, they're still putting out, I mean, at least at that time, it, it was viable. Uh, here's an interesting tidbit. So, um, uh, Michael McDonald joined the Doobies in 1975. It was after a stint in uh, Steely Dan. He contributed uh, to hits such as uh, Taking It to the Streets, It Keeps You Running, You Belong to Me. Um, what a Fool Believes. Do you know who co-wrote that with him? What a Fool Believes, which is a brilliant song. I believe it won a Grammy. Might have won Best Song. I'm having a brain fart. It was co-written by Kenny Loggins. Ah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. It stands to reason. Minute by Minute and Real Love were all part of that as well. Uh, he rejoined the band in, in 2019 for a 50th anniversary tour uh, that was postponed to the uh, pandemic that year. The so. pandemic. Yep, and uh, this is going to be the Doobies' first album with McDonald, Simmons, and Johnson on board since Taking It to the Streets in 1975. <laughs> so a Saturday show in Camden uh, at the Freedom Mortgage Pavilion this summer, August 3, uh, and their opening act is Steve Winwood. Man. Oh, wow. Oh, man. There you go. And, and yeah. Michael McDonald is on this Doobie Brothers tour, so yeah, that'll be a phenomenal night of music. It'd be great if we could get him on. Yeah. We'll have to work on that. And then one last thing, uh, we've had this guy on before. On the bookshelves now is I'm Told I Had a Good Time, a new coffee table photo book by the Monkeys' Mickey Dolans. Uh, the 490-page book features images from Dolans' childhood into the 1970s and initial work with the Monkeys uh, after they disbanded. He is the sole monkey. Yes. Many of the photos were taken by Dolans himself, and one sequence includes shots from the Monkees' 1967 tour that featured Jimi Hendrix experience as its short-lived opening act. There's also scores of photos from behind the scenes on uh, the Monkees TV show and the group's 1968 movie, Head. I love the uh, Monkees. Dolan's adds that uh, he may consider putting together a second book featuring photos from the years after uh, I'm told I had a good time stopped. And yes, as Steve said, Mickey is the sole surviving member of the Monkees. Davy Jones passed away in 2012. Peter Tork died in 2019. And we lost Michael Nesmith in 2021. And that, and I believe throughout the years, I think we had every single monkey on it. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That is what I have in news, news for you. We'll take a break. Come back in a second. Letter of the day for the Word of the Week prize and wrapping this thing up. Moving on to no sad bro territory. Stay with us. Black Keys on 93.3 WMMR. Beautiful people stay high. 10.25, a Thursday morning with the President Steve Show. Our program is <clears throat> wrapping up. And it's been a day. We have enjoyed today. Thank you for joining us. We have a few guests on board as well, so I would like to thank them. We had a nice, long conversation with Mr. John Belaris. Yeah. Been a yeah. while since yeah. we've uh, we've seen John, and uh, he seems to be doing well, man. He's happy doing the real estate. He still yeah. loves to uh, dip his toes into the... Um, to the weather stuff, and if you can follow him on X or social media, when a storm is around, he's a good guy to turn to. It's funny because somebody around here in the office came in and, and just goes, you buy all that? <laughs> About what he was telling them? I'm like, yeah, yes. buy all yeah, yeah, it really happened to yeah. him. You know, this all that stuff. And there's still people who will hear it and go, that just doesn't sound real. Yeah. But John went through some serious 
crap, man. He was taken advantage of. He, he was he was he was you, a victim of a crime. You can look at the legal documents. Yeah. They exist. Yep. Well, and we've known John for so long. Yeah. You know, uh, we know what we knew at the time when it was getting out of hand. Yeah. And, we, you know, so, yeah, I, I believe everything. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. Yep. So uh, great to have John by. And then uh, Glenn Such, the owner of Coco's Crush Ball. Yeah. Yeah. North Beach, Clearwater. Uh, and we will be at his establishment on Friday, one week from tomorrow, broadcasting live. And, uh, yeah, so there's going to be a big party there. And if you're in the area... Uh, we'd love to have you stop by and participate. And they they didn't know what the crushes were down in FLA, and apparently it's a big deal. And Isn't that crazy? And it's really making an impact, yeah. I, on, on their social media, which is uh, Coco's Crush uh, in, in North Beach, Kathy, they have, you can stamp out all the uh, orange crushes or various crushes that they have, so you can stamp <laughs> out the orange crush and then the lime crush and then whatever other one, it's mango. Great, <laughs> yeah, it's, great idea. Yes. Try and get them all. That's right. Uh, so we'll be there next Friday. Obviously, we're broadcasting from the ballpark on Thursday for uh, spring break, or not spring break. Well, we'll feel like Whatever, spring break. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is spring break yeah, down there. Yeah, uh, for spring training. Uh, so thank you to everybody on the program uh, today. And hopefully you also saw our uh, little guy sitting behind me and your chance to win some uh, movie passes. That'd be nice. Because we're doing it via our YouTube stream. Uh, but um, if you got a last second to check that out, maybe you can get signed up to win some movie passes. All right, we need to do the letter of the day. Is that going to be you today, Casey? Yeah. Uh, no. No. No, it's not. Yep. He's Whoa! actually here. Snatched out of my hand. I saw a uh I saw a silhouette by the door. And we welcome Pierre Robert to our yeah. studio. Yeah. 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 Take that. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. What does your shirt say? I said just see zero one. Five oh one. Yes. Okay. Ah, so I zero jeans. one. The jeans I wear are Levi's five oh ones only. Button fly? Yes. You prefer those? Yeah. Five oh ones are button flies. Yes. Uh they have number of five. Oh twos, five fourteen, five blah blah blah, blah, blah. But five oh ones are the original Levi's uh, blue jean, the button fly, and by far the best. So much so that you got a shirt with that on there. I did. Very good. Uh do you have a letter hidden in those uh, I flies? Do let me just unbutton. <laughs> I, yeah, why don't you unbutton that? <laughs> let me whip this out. Whip one out. Preston oh, and Steve on ninety three three WMMR. Now the daily letter. And the President Steve Show is brought to you today by the letter E is an empty. All right. And we are are going to give away tomorrow our word of the week prize four pack of tickets to see Cage the Elephant and special guest Young the Giant and Baker September 6th and a four pack of tickets to see Kings of Leon with special guest Fantagram and that's on September 23rd. Both shows are at the man. Uh, the Cage the Elephant uh, tickets go on sale tomorrow. The Kings of Leon tickets are on sale now via Ticketmaster. So Hopefully you win those. If not, you can buy them, too. Uh, what's happening on this Thursday morning? Well, as you mentioned, KG Elephant on sale tomorrow. Normally, we'd wait till tomorrow to do a block, but going to do a big barbecue block tomorrow for the MM Barbecue. So we'll do a block of Cage today. Also, a block of the Beastie Boys. Also, a block of Jay Giles for Peter Wolf's birthday, the singer of that legendary band. Excellent. All right, I want to thank our sponsors, Preston and Steve Show today, brought to you by Duncan. Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, Fresh Foods, Local Flavors, and by Meineke, Car Care. You won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Tomorrow on the program, wow, we have a we have a whole bunch of comedians. We have three. Three, our friend, three. Our friend Chris Porter is stopping by. Chris He's is great. Always Chris. great. Yeah. Andy Frasco will be in the studio, uh, in the studio, and Arnez J will be in the awesome. studio too. So all three of those in studio comedic performances on our program, and it's no sad bro too. Ooh, can't beat it. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day weather wise as well. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, friend. Bye bye. Kristen and Steve on ninety three three WMMR. Hey.